Good afternoon, councillors. We are live from council chamber. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Would like to call this meeting to order. And uh, at this time, I would like to acknowledge that we meet on the traditional land of Treaty 6 territory and acknowledge the diverse indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as Cree, Dene, Sotu, Blackfoot, Gorasu, as well as Metis and Inuit, and now settlers from around the world. I will do a roll call of council members. Councillor Wright. Councillor Knack. Good afternoon. Councillor Prince Bay. Hello. Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Paquette. Good afternoon. Councillor Tang. Good afternoon. Councillor Hamilton. Good afternoon. Councillor Rutherford. Hello. Councillor Salvador. Good afternoon. Councillor Cartmel. Good afternoon. Councillor Rice. Good afternoon. And Councillor Jans. Good afternoon. All right. Adoption of the agenda. Councillor Hamilton. Yep, I'll move the uh, adoption of the October 18th public hearing agenda. Thank you. Need a second. Who seconded that? Sorry. Councillor Rice. Councillor Rice seconded that. Please vote. I'm um, yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Rice. I'm um, yes. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. I'm um, a yes to Tang. Thank you, Councillor Tang. We have all the votes. Uh, display the votes, please. That is carried protocol items. Well, quickly, we have students here with us from George P. Nicholson School. I think that's uh, Councillor Rice's word. Councillor Rice is joining us for the meeting, but she's uh, uh, joining us virtually. And uh, nice to see you all. I hope you're enjoying your trip uh, to City Hall. Have fun. All right, explanation of the public hearing process. The clerk will call out the bylaws to be dealt with. I will call out the names of the people registered to speak to each bylaw. Next, council members will select the bylaws that we, they wish to discuss and vote on any bylaws that have not been selected to, for discussion. Council will then deal with each of the bylaws that were selected for discussion and debate. For each item, administration will first provide an overview of the bylaw. Members of the public who have registered to speak will then be invited to make their presentations. Those in favor will speak first in panels, followed by those opposed in panels. Each person will have five minutes to make comments. The clerk will run the official timer in the council chamber. The timer lights on the podiums will be green for the first four minutes turn yellow when there is one minute remaining, and flash red when the five minutes are up. If you're participating virtually, you may wish to use a timer of your own. When everyone in your panel has had a chance to present, members of council may ask questions of you or other panel members. For this reason, you may wish to remain in the meeting until all questions have been asked of your panel. After comments from the public, council may ask questions of city administration. After all questions of administration have concluded, I will ask council if they wish to ask any further questions to the, of those who presented in the response to new information that may have arisen during the public hearing. Thereafter, council may close the public hearing and debate the bylaw. 
If you're participating virtually, please remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking and refrain from using the raise hand function as it creates issues of fairness and decorum. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please reach out to the office of the city clerk using the contact information provided in your confirmation of registration or at city.clerk at edmonton.ca. If you're here with us in person, the clerk will guide you to your seat when it's your turn to speak. As Ed Edmonton transition from provincial mask mandates and city mandatory mask bylaws, we ask visitors to council chamber to be kind and respectful of each to, to each other. You can wear a mask to protect yourself or those around you, and please respect people's personal decisions around wearing masks. In the event of an emergency, please follow the clerk's directions to evacuate. City staff will direct you to your muster point. So at this time, I go to clerk. Please read the bylaws. Call the bylaws. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.1, Charter Bylaw 20291? to facilitate the development of a new dry pond, Kenilworth. We have Neil Osadiak to answer questions only and Corey Churchill to answer questions only in favor, and no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there, sorry, can you ask them to identify themselves? Oh yes, yes. of course, thank you. Neil Osadiak, are you there? In person, okay, and Corey Churchill. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.2, Charter Bylaw 20290, to allow for the development of business, industrial, and commercial uses, Alberta Park Industrial? We have in favor, Nola Kilmartin. Nola, are you there? Uh, Catherine Gregg to answer questions only. Ka Catherine, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Chuck Roller to answer questions only. Chuck, are you there? Okay, we'll circle back if this item is selected. Uh, no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.3, .3, Charter Bylaw 20288? to rezone land for a stormwater management facility, Southeast Industrial. We have no one in favor, and we have no one in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.4, Charter Bylaw 20294, to allow for a mix of small-scale housing, Crestwood? We have Alco Franken to answer questions only. Joining remotely, Alco. No, and no one is in opposition. We'll circle back if this bylaw is selected. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.5, Charter Bylaw 20295, to allow for small scale infill development, Grandview Heights? We have in favor Chad Snehor to answer questions only. Chad, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, and we have one in person in opposition. Ruth Adria, in person. Ruth Adria. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.6, Charter Bylaw 20296, to allow for a mix of small scale housing, High Park? We have Alco Franken to answer questions only. I'll check again. Alco, are you there? and no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.7, Charter Bylaw 20302, to, we, allow, sorry, to allow for small-scale info development, Jasper Park? Yeah. We have in favor, Marcelo Figuera to answer questions only. Marcelo, are you there joining remotely? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you, and no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Items 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10 will be dealt with together. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.8, bylaw 20234, amendment to the Ellerslie Area Structure Plan? Item 3.9, bylaw 20235, amendment to the Ellerslie Neighborhood Structure Plan? 
and item 3.10, Charter Bylaw 20236, to allow for this, to allow for commercial office and service uses, Ellerslie. We have Michael Gurley to answer questions only in person. Michael, there you are, and no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there any? Uh, items 3.11, 3.12, and 3.13 will be dealt with together. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.11, bylaw 19471, amendment to the pilot sound area structure plan? Item 3.12, bylaw 19472, amendment to the Cy Becker neighborhood structure plan? And item 3.13, charter bylaw 19473, to allow for low rise multi-unit housing and low intensity commercial office and service uses side becker uh, we have bladen dibbon to answer questions only in person there you are and mark halabi to answer questions only in person thank you so much for being here and no one is in opposition thank you mr mayor items 3.14 and 3.15 will be dealt with together is there anyone to speak to item 3.14, amendment to the Hermitage General Outline Plan, and item 3.15, Charter Bylaw 20298, to allow for the multi-unit housing and a variety of commercial service uses, Cannon Ridge? Uh, we have Veronica Eno to answer questions only in person. Thank you. Uh, Blair Forster to in answer questions only in person. Uh, uh, Stephen Yu to answer questions only in person, and Scott Mackey to answer questions only in person. There you are, all four of you are here. And we have one person in opposition, Kyle Hen Hendrickson in person. Kyle, there you are, thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Items 3.16 and 3.7. 3.17 will be dealt with together. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.16, bylaw 20303, to amend the Ebers Neighborhood Area Structure Plan? And, and, by, and item 3.17, charter bylaw 20206, to modify the existing DC2 provision by adding commercial use opportunities, a fifth commercial building, and regulations relative to risk and rail Ebers. Uh, we have Ryan Edick to answer questions only remotely. Ryan, are you there? Yep. And we have Dean Snehur to answer questions only. Dean, are you there? No. Nope. And no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.18, Charter Bylaw 203? Zero 01 to provide alternative implementation methods for affordable housing contributions, Boyle Street. We have Claudia Resnack to answer questions only remotely. Claudia, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Thank you. And Scott Mackey in person is here. Okay. And no one is in opposition. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anyone to speak to item 3.19, Charter Bylaw 20297? to allow for low-rise multi-unit housing, Sherwood. We have Tony Mahay in favor, joining in person. Tony, there you are. And we have one person in opposition, Ralph Steenwand. Ralph Steenwand, joining remotely. Ralph, are you there? No. Okay. Yep. Yes, I am. Oh, there, oh, there you are. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so that is it. Now I'll go to council members for selecting bylaws for debate. Councillor Hamilton? Yeah, could I select items 3.9, please? And I think that is it for me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, um, so just to confirm, 3.9, 3. 3.8, and 3.9 are being dealt, and 10, yeah, sorry. So 3.8, 3. 3.9, 3. 3. 3.10 no, are like, selected. Sorry, I think you misunderstood me. I meant 3.19, uh, the Sherwood item. Oh, 3.19. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hamilton. 
Okay. Uh, Councillor Wright. Uh, yes, could I select 3.3, .3, please? 3.3. .3. Yes. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Oh. Uh, Councillor Stevenson. Apologies, I'm not sure whose whose ward this is, so I'm happy to be preempted in my selecting. But I think three four and th three fourteen and three fifteen must be selected. And three point five, and 3 okay. 5 uh, for a speaker. Sorry, can uh, Councillor Stevenson? Can you say it again, please? Uh, three point five has a speaker in opposition. Yeah. So I'll select that and item. 314 and 315, I believe, also has a speaker, and, and it's noted that it must be selected. But that is not my word, so if someone else would like to select, that's fine too. Hermitage, that's uh, Councillor Paquette, right? I'll come to you. Okay, I'll come to you, Councillor Paquette. You can uh, reselect them again. Councillor Jans? I was just going to select 3.5, but Councillor Stevenson had it. 3.5? Uh, Councillor Paquette? Yeah, so are we, if I select uh, 3.15 to the clerk, so I'm selecting 3.14 as well? Yeah, so 3.14 and 3.15 are uh, cross referenced. Cross referenced, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. That's my selection, please. Okay, so 3.3 uh, is selected. 3.5 is selected, 3.14 and 3.15 are selected, and 3.19 is selected. Did I miss anything? Okay, can you please, uh, can someone move the balance? Councillor uh, Cardmel? Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Sophie. I'll move closure of the public hearing on items 3.1, 3.2, 3.4. 3.8, 3 3.10, 3 3.11, 3 3.12, 3.13, 3.16, 3.17, and 3.18. Thank you, Councillor Cardinal. Second by Councillor, uh, there was Councillor Salvador. Salvador? Oh, Councillor Salvador, got it. Okay. Uh, please vote. Yes. Thank you, Council Rutherford. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. Uh, that is carried. Mayor Sohi, I'll move first reading of the aforementioned items. Second. Second by Council Salvador. Please uh, vote. Just missing one vote. Councillor Paquette? It did not come up by me, yes. Thank you. We have all the votes. Uh, display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor so he all moved second reading of the aforementioned items. Second. Thank you, Council Salvador. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor so he'll move consideration of third reading of the aforementioned items. Second. Thank you. Please vote for consideration. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor so he'll move third and final reading of Charter Bylaw 20291, Charter Bylaw 20290. Charter Bylaw 20294, Charter Bylaw 20296, Charter Bylaw 20302, Bylaw 202, pardon me, 20234, Charter Bylaw 20236, Bylaw 19471, Bylaw 19472, 
by Charter Bylaw 19473, Bylaw 20303, Charter Bylaw 20206, and Charter Bylaw 20301. Second. Thank you, Council Salvador. Please vote. I think we oh, forgot sorry. 3. Um, 9. Did we Yeah, 3.9. 3. 3.9 9 yeah. was not selected. That was not selected. Oh, I missed one? Yeah, 3.9. We can come back to that separately. Okay, but vote on the rest or, yeah, then we'll come back. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Uh, Mayor Sohi, I'll move closure of the public hearing on item 3.9. Thank you. Second. Council Salvador, please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor Sohi, I'll move first reading of item 3.9. Second. Uh, please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor Sohi, I'll move second reading of item 3.9. Second. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. <coughs> that is carried. Mayor Sohi, I'll move consideration of third reading of item 3.9. Second. Please vote. We have all the votes. Uh, display the votes, please. That is carried. Mayor Sohi, I'll move uh, third and final reading of bylaw 20235. Second. Thank you. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Thank you, Councilor Cardinal and Councilor Salvador. Uh, all right. The first item is 3.3 .3, Charter Bylaw 20288 to rezone land for our storm water management facility southeast. Okay. Thank uh, you, Mayor. Is there a presentation from administration? Uh, is, is a presentation desired or were there just questions? Um, I outside? did just have questions, but I guess maybe for my colleagues, if we could just do a quick presentation. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon. This application proposes to rezone a 0 0.07 hectare site in the southeast of Edmonton from the IM or medium industrial zone to the PU or public utility zone for the purpose of accommodating the development of a stormwater management facility. This change is intended, is intended to adjust the boundaries of the stormwater management facility to accommodate changes to the facility following a detailed design. Next slide, please. The application is located in the southeast industrial neighborhood the NSP designates the site for stormwater management facility land use and the proposed rezoning conforms to the plan's policies. The subject site is surrounded by a mix of industrial uh, zone uses and this area will be incorporated into the PU zoned stormwater management facility that is intended to service surrounding industrial development. This is compatible with existing and future surrounding development. Next slide please. Administration recommends that Charter Bylaw 20288 be approved for the, as the proposed changes conform with the Southeast Industrial Area Structure Plan, will allow for a stormwater management facility to service the neighborhood and will be compatible with surrounding land uses. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, so currently, I, I drive by this every day um, and I see the construction going on and I, I think this is great to have this development going on. I'm just concerned right now, um, that's, is that on a pipeline right of way or anything or? No. No, okay. 
Um, I, I guess my big concern with this, with this whole lot of land, and we're only just looking at one teeny tiny piece of it, um, is to the north, we've got the Fulton Creek, um, which is the wetland. And I'm just wondering sort of what the environmental impact is on this whole, this whole lot. Sorry, Councillor. Um, for this particular change in land use, we did not reassess the environmental impact. This is just going into an existing planned stormwater facility. I don't know if my colleague, uh, Justina Chwanda, wants to add anything further. So you've reassessed. So we, is there a, a current assessment, environmental assessment? Uh, Coastal right. Uh, this is in line with the neighborhood structure plan and the planned uh, stormwater management facility. This change is only associated by having a storm trunk, uh, which needs to be accommodated over here. Typically, we like storm trunks in a public utility lot rather than a private lot for access and maintenance purposes. Uh, so all the environmental assessments were done as part of NSP, and they are still current. Councillor, just to add to that, when and if a larger application does come in for the rest or the balance of the land, uh, there will be additional environmental assessments on it. Right now, the zoning isn't changing for the rest of the land, so it's, uh, as Mr. Tawana said, it's in line with the existing land use permissions. So I, I do notice in the report that there is another um, uh, proposal coming forward for this. Um, I'm just wondering why, why it hasn't all been done at once. That application hasn't been submitted yet, um, so there, it depends on the timing uh, of the applicant uh, and their means or their wishes to phase out the, uh, the parcels development. Well, I, I've been at, I'll, I'll, straight up, I've been asking for an environmental assessment report on this plot of land for months and I haven't been able to get it. Um, and I'm looking at or considering wanting to refer this application back until such a time as, as I get that information. So right now, what's before you today is that, that sliver of land that is adding uh, a small proportion to the PU lot to allow the development of that stormwater management pond in line with our current standards and guidelines, uh, which seek to include the outlets and the pipes in that PU lot. Uh, so that's under, so it's under the ownership and control of EPCOR. Uh, when and if that future application does come in, it will come in with the full suite of environmental site assessments. We only look at environmental site assessments when that zoning or the land use has changed uh, in terms of a more sensitive or improved use. Uh, and right now the, the balance of that land isn't changing. Okay, so the, the land like to the, to the left of what's being asked to be rezoned. I, I'm just wondering why you need that, why, why the need is for that small sliver of land at this time to be designated as public utility. Councillor, there is a storm pipe uh, at the time of detailed design. They uh, realized that a storm pipe would need to be put in over there, which uh, would be under the ownership of EPCOR. So we need to accommodate that storm pipe in a public lot so that's why this change is necessary. So, Councillor, the stormwater pond is currently planned to be built uh, with an existing phase of development, uh, which will accommodate uh, the runoff. And if the, the parcel to the east uh, is further developed and rezoned, uh, those assessments will come in at that time. Councillor Wright, so, just to add um, to the answer that's been given by the team is that this is uh, an example that when we got the detailed design that we needed, that the applicant realized they needed to do a small rezoning to be able to accommodate that detailed design. And when the information that you're asking for, we will absolutely provide for you when we have a wider application. So I do have some, some existing concerns with other landowners in the area. Um, and I'd be happy, or any one of us would be happy to meet with you and understand those in the area. Uh, they're probably not uh, relevant to this, to this application. It really is about trying to get the right stormwater design in the area in light of additional information that, that they learned as they got more detailed in the engineering. 
Okay, and so is this then to allow drainage from uh, I'm the... sorry, Councillor, right? Your time okay. is up. You can come back for another okay. round, Thank though. You. Sorry about that. Councillor Rutherford? Yeah, I think I just want to pick up on a, a few questions from Councillor Wright, because I I don't feel like I'm getting clear clear answers. So when was the, was this parcel ever rezoned, or was it always just sort of put in as part of this neighbourhood plan? I, I don't have the specific date, but this was rezoned some time ago to IM as part of, um, in, in alignment with the plan. Yeah. Um, and again, because the plans are done um, at a more conceptual level, as you get more information, there may become a need to shift some of those lines. And this is just one of those cases where the stormwater facility did take a very small additional piece of land to accommodate that yeah. pipe. Yeah, but I think I'm, so when we did that rezoning, for it to be a stormwater, was there an environmental impact assessment that was done at that time? Yes, there is. How come Councillor Wright cannot get a copy of that? I was unaware that the request was made. Um, I'm certainly able to send that over to your office, Councillor. And if we've rezoned something, be it a small addition or be it the larger parcel, and they do more detailed design and they have to do a more fulsome, I'm guessing, environmental impact assessment report, is that correct as part of that detailed design work? Not necessarily. Um, the detailed design doesn't require that because the land permissions are already given based off of the uh, environmental work. Okay, so I get that this is a small par parcel now, but at the end of the day, we're trying to right fit to make an overall parcel work. And what we're hearing is that the ward councillor is missing information that they feel comfortable to make that decision today. Is is the, my understanding correct? The PU lot, when it was rezoned uh, last year, uh, came in with an environmental site assessment. Uh, when we got this application, which was a small deviation from that, we did not require an additional environmental site assessments for that one sliver of land because... No, I, I get that. So I think what you're, you're missing, though, is, is the decision has now... It's still triggered for that decision to come back to us. So if there's, a, if there's information that we need, looking at that, because at the end of the day, this is for a stormwater treatment facility, and we're a new council that doesn't have that environmental impact report from the overall stormwater treatment facility, isn't the, doesn't this trigger, and maybe I'll ask this question to, to Mr. Johnson, doesn't this trigger us not necessarily going back and, and re-looking at the whole zone, but this gives us the opportunity to say we need that information to make this decision today. If you believe that information is important for the decision on the rezoning, which isn't the whole parcel, it is just, just that sliver, sliver yeah. then yes, uh, council has prerogative to ask for that information. Okay. If it's unavailable, you'd need to decide your recourse based on that. Councillor, okay. can I add that high-level uh, environmental reporting would have been done with the ASP as well to look at the compatible land uses. Okay. Um, the environmental impact would only be needed if there are impacts seen in the area. Okay, so is, does anybody have that in terms of, I know the 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 ward councillor mentioned around the Fulton Creek. So there would be, would there be any stormwater runoff that would potentially be contaminated in this, in this area that would uh, potentially be running off into Fulton Creek? The assessment was completed and the stormwater management facility is okay next to the creek. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Councillor Tang? Um, so I guess I was just wondering if you can comment on how 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 critical this sl uh, sliver is, kind of to the overall thing, and what's the implication of a referral? So the sliver allows the progression uh, of development to date, uh, and allows the transfer and the ownership of the PU lot, the full PU lot, and the full stormwater facility over to Epcor, who owns and operates the facility. Uh, so deferrals uh, would delay some of that work. So the re re referral would delay the servicing, say, for example, of the, the neighborhood? It would delay uh, some of the, the development of the parcel. Uh, however, through the review of this uh, and the review of past environmental reports, it was deemed that this additional sliver didn't require additional studies because the original study covered the majority of the area already. Gotcha. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Councillor Ting. Councillor Cartmel. Yeah, I, I think my questions may have been asked. Um, there was a neighborhood structure plan and an area structure plan crafted and brought to and passed by City Council, correct? That is correct. And that included an environmental study, correct? Also correct. So City Council at some point in the past duly considered, discussed, and approved that environmental plan and this subdivision? Yes, that's correct. And the site of this, so that this, this land is uh, essentially a correction in a boundary that involves 0 0.07 hectares? That's a good assessment. Which my, by my math is roughly 7,000 square feet or the size of one city lot, one residential lot? That is correct, Councillor. And the, the sole reason for doing this is so we can get a pipe out of the pond and into the system? That is correct, Councillor. So this sounds really innocuous. Uh, maybe I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cartmel. I would just like to acknowledge that we have some visitors here today. We have grade six students from George P. Nicholson School with teacher Mr. Topping. And this is uh, in your ward counselor is Councillor Jennifer Rice. So hello everyone, welcome. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Councillor Cartmel, can you move the second round, please? I'm sorry, I had just a couple more questions, Councillor. Oh, Principal. I'm my, very my sorry. I'm um, very sorry I interrupted No, I, I thought I was done. I'm not. Uh, um, maybe to, well, anybody in admin, would it be possible to get this environmental impact assessment put into our mailboxes this afternoon? And maybe we don't delay this, this uh, process? Yes. And maybe we can uh, consider that and it can be, this can be postponed until later in the evening to approve. Just a suggestion. Thank you, Councillor Principe. I'm done. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cartmel. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, is this something that we can do then, postpone this item and then just move on to the next item? Yeah, yeah. I can we can do we that. need a motion for that? Yes, so do you want to postpone it to the end of the public hearing today? Yeah, we can do a, a quick motion for that. To have okay, that thank you. I'll put forward the motion then to postpone this till the end. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Please vote. Yeah, we're just sending out the vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. So now we will move on to item 3.5 and we'll deal with 3.3 .3 at the end. So for item 3.5, we have uh, Chad Snehur, uh, who is online, uh, to answer questions only. Do we have any uh, questions? Oh, sorry, is there a presentation? I, no, there's I'm, not. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, administration, we have a presenta presentation? Okay, yes. please go ahead. Good afternoon. This application is to rezone a site in the Grandview Heights neighborhood from the RF1 single detached residential zone to the RF3 small scale infill development zone. The purpose of the RF3 zone is to provide for a mix of small-scale housing for infill situations, such as single detached, semi-detached, and small-scale multi-unit housing. Next slide, please. The site is located at 63rd Avenue and 123rd Street at the primary access point to the neighborhood. This entrance forms a small community hub containing a school, outdoor recreation facilities, and a small commercial center. It has quick access to the bus service along 122nd Street and a nearby shared use path provides an approximately 12 minute walk uh, to the South Campus LRT station. Next slide, please. 
Administration sought feedback from the public by mailing advance notices to surround residents, surrounding residents, publishing information on the city's website, and posting site signage. Administration received three responses in opposition to the application. Concerns included that the site was uh, too small for an increase in density, that redevelopment would have negative impacts on the limited street parking supply in the area. Next slide, please. The key differences between the RF1 and RF3 zone are an increase in density and a slight increase in site coverage. To mitigate the impact to neighboring properties, the RF3 zone requires a three meter interior side setback. The RF3 zone has the same maximum height as the RF1 zone, and when combined with the increased interior side setback, will result in a building that remains sensitive to the surrounding small-scale residential buildings. As none of the properties along this block are connected to a lane, on-site parking would be accessed from the front street. Next slide, please. The proposed rezoning aligns with the goals and policies of the city plan, which encourages increased density at a variety of scales, intensities, and designs. The RF3 zone, by allowing additional forms of small-scale residential infill, will support an increased variety of housing in the community. Next slide, please. In summary, administration supports this application. It provides the opportunity for increased housing diversity in the Grandview Heights neighborhood. The zone regulations ensure compatibility with the surrounding properties and it aligns with city plans infill objectives. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aubin, and I'm very sorry to have <laughs> missed you there. No uh, negative intentions meant there. Um, and so we've heard from uh, our speaker in favor is just for questions only. Do we have any questions? Okay, so we'll move on to uh, our speaker in opposition, Ms. Adria, if we could escort her to a speaker or microphone. Hello, Ms. Adria. I just wanted to let you know you'll have five minutes to speak. On the podium there, there's a green light that will go on for uh, four minutes, and then the yellow light for one minute, and then when your time is over, the red light. Okay. And I'll just have you turn on your microphone. It's not on. Oh, there you go. Now it is. It's on? Yeah, great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Grandview is a very beautiful area. Broad streets, tree lines. Sometimes it r reminds you of a Paris alley. It's lovely, and and Grandview has been very welcome to infill. As a matter of fact, there are a number of large homes that have grand homes that have been built, and I believe that my taxes went up a thousand dollars because I'm in cr close proximity. So. This is a very lovely area, and now I got a little note in the mail that some entity, administration, wants to put rental at the entrance. It's like you have a grand end of edifice uh, built, and then you want to put some crappy doors in front. Uh, we, we find it unacceptable. You know, rentals, in, in the beginning, it's very beautiful, and in, but ultimately, it's run down at the heels. Why would, you, why would you put this blight on this property? That's really all I have to say. Thank you very much. Uh, now, I'll just have you wait, and we may have uh, some questions for you. Councillor Jans. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Miss Adria, for coming to speak. So, I am I to infer that your concern with this proposal is the nature of the ownership. That if it was not a rental, you would be okay with it. Well, why should it's there's residential there. 
in in at this moment there's a residential why why does it does need to be changed uh, if i see the proposal it's also going to be residential uh, i'm sorry i didn't it's understand. still going to be residential it's still going to be someone's home no but it's, uh, no 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 rental is rental we had years as, as a business, rental, and our buildings were beautiful. Sometimes we got cheesecake, cheesecake at Christmas from tenants. Now, uh, you know, we parted with it some time ago. I've driven past. It's down at the heels. Curtains aren't up. Lawns aren't cut. That's what happens to rental. Uh, we see it as a blight on, on Grandview. I, I guess I'm a bit confused because, so there's that house on the corner, and I think it's been, so I've been, the, I was the school trustee since 2010. I remember knocking on that door and, and, and I mean, I might be called out of order here by the, by our lawyer, but I think I've seen a dozen different um, owners of that property. I think it has changed hands many, many times. Am I out of, am I out of order? We just have to be careful, Councillor, that we don't focus on ownership in a land use public hearing. Okay. So, so it is not necessarily the form Miss Adria, that you take issue with, it's it's the ownership. Am I am I correct there? Like if if the because the proposal is to is to to in, in, in increase the size of the dwelling there. It's it's proposal to have some sort of rental. Okay, so it's the rental you have an issue with. It's the rental. I mean, ultimately, people rent for two reasons: they either can't afford, or they don't. You know, they don't want to be bothered. And, and that's the reality. In, if, you, if you walk through Grandview, you see people, uh, they're out there, the owners, taking care of their homes. They're interested in care. Ultimately, rental is rental, no matter how you... And ultimately, it will be a blight. And there's no reason. Actually, that house, I'm very... Because we've lived there for a while. Uh, that house was for sale at the time, same, just very recently, at the same time that another house was for sale. And about approximately the same size. And the one house, you know, it sold within days. It seemed the sign was up and then it was for, sold. But it had been upgraded. And I believe perhaps the owner of that corner house had never really... Uh, done upgrading, but it is it is residential. Okay. Well, well. Thank you for thank you for for clarifying your concerns. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Councillor Jens. Councillor Wright. Um, I, I guess I just want clarity. I think the application that's before us in the, in the reports talks about it being um, multi-use housing, um, but you said you've got something there that indicates the type of ownership is going to be a, a rental properties, or? Well, I mean, what what does what does multi housing mean? That, that could be, you know, it could be townhomes. It could be like sort of, um, you know, apartment style or something like that. So, and and could be a condominium, you know, opportunities to purchase. So I'm I'm just. I just wanted to clarify. Okay, I can't understand why it should be changed, that particular house. And it's the entry. It's sort of, Grandview is an unusual community. And there's very little crime. It's, it's just an amazing, you can leave your big door on the garage open. Nobody's going to violate you. Yeah. It's an unusual, now you want to change that entrance to you know, multi whatever, name it what you like. Yeah, because I mean, part of part of the city plan is looking to you know to create higher density in our um, in those mature neighborhoods, and especially I can see on on the report here with it being on the the bus road as well. So that helps people you know to be able to to get around. Um, or so, our, our people take buses too. Yeah, yeah. And there are, there's buses there. <laughs> and and like we, we see people get, getting off. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of people park in Grandview and then they take the bus. Yeah. But um, we do have, like I say, in, in proximity to where I live, uh, there have been, oh, 
massive build because the lots are so large. Mm -hmm. They're huge. So they built massive, there's infill. We've increased the density. So I just object to putting a blight in front of this grand area. It's a beautiful area. People, when they come, they say, oh, isn't it beautiful? Why should we change it? Yeah, and, and I love the mature neighborhoods as well, and I, I, I grew up in one too, so, um, and, but it, it's nice to be able to see the change um, going through to, to accommodate, I guess, maybe those that may, may can't afford one of those, uh, those, those grand No, 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 homes. but that, that's, yeah. you know, we always see, when, when you go pa walking past these homes, these are just ordinary people who work very hard and they're still out there maintaining. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they're bringing in all kinds of help. It's not that way. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. And, and I hope the residents We're that decide very, to move into this new development feel the same way. We're just very, very common people that, yeah. and, and for some reason, some people, uh, it's very important, uh, their, their home, you know? And some people, I remember when we first bought a home, it was like, I said, oh gosh, we've got chains now. A lot of people don't want those chains, right? Yeah. And that's the difference in people. Yeah, there's there's certainly pride of home ownership, and that takes many forms, well, I guess, of home right. ownership. That's yeah. right. That's right. It doesn't yeah. mean to say that somehow they're, you know, people can't afford. Or... Okay. Okay. Well, I just I just wanted to, to clarify the the one point about what the the purpose of of the application is. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Um, actually, Councillor Wright, can you take the chair? Taken. Thank you. So I just wanted to say that today what we're here for is just for the rezoning of the land. We can't determine if it's going to be rental and that's not what our, our um, decision is based on here today. We have to decide what's the best use of the land. So that's when we're making our decision, we'll always, we'll always be making the best intention for the use of land. I just wanted to let you know, okay? Yeah, but so why, why did, why arbitrarily this was chosen. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it I was drive hard. around the city. Yeah. There's all kinds of places to place more housing. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand your concerns. I, I just, you need to see it as literally putting a, a blight on on a lovely. And why can't we keep some areas as just? Very lovely, you know, never mind who lives there. Well, thank you very much for joining us today and expressing yeah, Well, thank your you views. for allowing thank me to, you. to express my very strong thoughts. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. And I'll just take the chair back. Thank you. It's yours. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Uh, point, do of, we... point of order, there's some alarm going off. Am I hearing that? Is it just me? Okay, we dealt with it. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Jans, for our, your concern for all of our safety. We appreciate it. Now, do we have any uh, questions to administration? Councillor Tang? Um, so for property at this stage, we're just looking at rezoning, rezoning a step before design, correct? That's correct. So at this point, there is no design that might, that for people to have a sense of what it might look like, other than the, the modeling you've done in terms of, you know, maximum four, four principal dwellings. That's right, the model is just to show uh, the maximum build out, the massing of what the building could potentially look like. The design is done closer to the development permit stage where construction drawings are done. And the decision of the landowner to rezone, uh, c there could be a variety of reasons generally, correct? Yes, and um, the intention of this um, applicant uh, stated at the time of application was for row housing. So what is uh, called in our zoning bylaw multi-unit housing. And row housing could be ownership or rental, and home ownership is not a factor in land use decision, correct? You're correct. We allow the public to express their views. Absolutely. We don't we don't interfere with that, but council's decision is based on the land use factors, not ownership. Yeah, thank you. That's all. 
Thank you, Councillor Tang. Would anyone like to move the closure of the bylaw? I will move the closure. Second. Second. Thank you, Councillor Tang and Councillor Rutherford. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. I'll move first reading of item 3.5. Second. And I'll just speak briefly to it if I could. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Stevenson. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, you know, thanks to administration for preparing the report and thank you to our speaker for joining us in chambers today. It is always important to, to hear from Edmontonians. Uh, I did just want to take a moment to, um, you know, express my, my strong uh, opposite belief to what was expressed today in terms of uh, renters in our community. Uh, I just want to be clear that I think that uh, all Edmontonians add to our community, uh, that we need to welcome a variety of households to all of our neighbourhoods. Um, some of our colleagues uh, at this table are renters, and I believe that they contribute a great deal to our community. Um, I look forward to some new housing options in this neighbourhood. Uh, I think that the zoning uh, changes that have been made do require uh, very attractive buildings in our neighbourhood, so look forward to that. Uh, great addition to this neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Knack. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. I, I, I would echo um, much of what Councillor Stevenson just shared and, and just add a little bit, which is that, um, you know, I live in a neighborhood where, where we're seeing quite a bit of redevelopment, so a lot of row housing developments, um, which is made up of folks who both own and rent. And I know that's not before us today for our discussion, but I, I think it's worth, um, you know, flagging that part of why we're doing this evolution in our in our communities is to provide greater housing choice. Uh, not everyone wants to be in a standalone single family home. Many do, and that's great that that choice continues to exist in wide supply across the city. Uh, but I do think it is important that we we continue to provide great opportunities of, of other choices. Uh, the row housing that I live uh, right across the street from is a beautiful addition to the neighborhood. It replaced uh, two single family homes that unfortunately weren't kept up very well. And so uh, I love to see that that reinvestment into the community and having met uh, neighbors who live in that space to see how much they want to help build a stronger community is, is so encouraging to see. So, um, you know, I, I and I've talked about this in past public hearings, but I think uh, every, every member of my family except me rents. Um, and they, they do that for a variety of reasons in their lives. And I think it's, it's good that they have those options and those choices. And I'm really glad that as a, as a city, we're doing more and more to try to provide choice no matter how folks want to live. So this, uh, this proposal aligns with the city plan. I think as a city, we're working to provide corner lots uh, for row housing more and more. So uh, I'll be supporting it and, uh, and look forward to, to seeing how, uh, like we, we are seeing across the city, that we'll continue to have great additions to our neighborhoods as new developments occur. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knack. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. Uh, I'll move second reading of item 3.5. Second. Please vote. Just, oh, we have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. I'll move consideration of third reading on item 3.5. Please vote on consideration. Second. 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 
We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. Uh, I'll move charter, uh, third and final reading of Charter Bylaw 20295. Second. Thank you. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. So next we will be moving to item 3.14, 3.15. And do we have, yeah, okay, go ahead. This application is to amend the Hermitage General Outline Plan to accommodate mixed use and to amend the zoning bylaw from CNC or Neighborhood Convenience Commercial Zone to a DC2 site specific development control provision to allow for multi unit housing in the form of row housing and medium rise apartment housing, as well as a variety of commercial and services in Cannon Ridge. Next slide, please. The site is approximately 3.3 hectares in area and located in the eastern portion of the Cannon Ridge neighborhood at the intersection of Victoria Trail and Hermitage Road. This slide shows the site in context of the neighborhood. The areas to the north and the south are developed with single detached and semi-detached dwellings. Overlander School is located to the west and Cannon Ridge Park to the east. A commercial site is developed to the south under the DC2 provision. This site is serviced by existing transits, uh, transit available along both Victoria Trail and Hook Road. Next slide, please. Administration sought feedback from the public through public advance notices, information published on the city website, and through site signage. The advance notices were sent out to 800 recipients in the Cannon Ridge neighborhood, as well as the Homesteader Community League, and 16 responses were received. In summary, the main concerns were that the development of row housing and apartment housing will add to the on-street parking shortages and exacerbate traffic congestion and crime in the neighborhood, that apartment housing is not in keeping with the character of the neighborhood, that single-family homes or row housing would be preferred, the development will result, result in a loss of views, and that property values could go down. Next slide, please. The proposed DC2 provision will accommodate row housing up to a maximum height of 12 meters or two and a half stories and apartment housing up to 23 meters or six stories. Commercial uses and services are also proposed along Victoria Trail Northwest. The proposed DC2 reflects the CB2 or general business zones in terms of uses and development regulations, but with increased flexibility to attract businesses and facilitate the full build out of a long standing vacant site. The DC2 contains fewer restrictions in terms of maximum commercial square footage, the removal of occupancy and public space thresholds for certain uses. Next slide, please. The proposed multi-unit house housing is located interior to the site and towards the park to provide a logical transition in height and density between the single family homes to the north and Cannon Ridge Park to the east. The development of row housing under this DC2 is comparable to the RF5 zone and the apartment housing is comparable to the RA8 zone. Next slide, please. This charter bylaw includes an amendment to the Hermitage General Outline Plan to redesignate the site from CNC to mixed uses. If approved, approximately 200 people and 246 apartment housing units and 25 row housing units will be added to the neighborhood, resulting in a slight increase in the overall residential density from 34.6 units to 35.1 net residential hectare units. This application aligns with the goals and policies of the city plan by using land and infrastructure efficiently, increasing housing choice in the neighborhood, and encouraging the development of a complete community that has access to a variety of stores and services located within walking distance to residential areas and along major roads and transit routes. Next slide, please. Administration supports this application because it contributes to housing choice, uses land and infrastructure efficiently, and allows for the opportunity to develop a variety of services to support the surrounding community. It is also compatible with existing land uses. We recommend for approval of the resolution and charter bylaw 20298. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in favor, we have uh, four members of the public with us uh, to answer questions only, correct? Do you have a presentation? Oh, please come on down to a microphone.
Okay, Mr. Yu, they will um, queue up your presentation and then you'll have five minutes to speak. The light will be green for four minutes, yellow for one, and then when it's red, it's time's up. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, members of council. My name is Stephen Yu. I'm the manager of planning at Invista Consulting. It's been a little while since I was last here in person, so it's nice to be back. Um, I'm here today to present on the Canning Ridge rezoning and on behalf of Forrester Harbor Development Corp. Next slide, please. The site is located in Northeast Edmonton in the Cannon Ridge neighborhood. Next slide, please. Um, and it's currently zoned the Neighborhood Commer Convenience Commercial Zone. And it, a direct control zone is proposed to support mixed use development, including commercial, mid-rise residential development, and tenant housing. Next slide, please. The site is located at the northeast corner of Victoria Trail and Hermitage Road, and is well serviced by transit routes. Next slide, please. The site is nestled between two large parks and located minutes away from Hermitage Park to the east. The site is also separated from the existing um, residential development to the north by a 10 meter walkway. Uh, next slide, please. As a direct control, a pre-notification letter was sent out to residents within a 60 meter radius with one phone call received by Invistec. Due to the low number of responses, a second notification letter was sent out with no responses received by Invistec. Uh, next slide, please. In addition, notification was provided by the city via postcards to residents where transportation, commercial lands, and housing topology um, where concerns were raised as identified by administration. Next slide, please. As part of the application, a transportation impact assessment was prepared and determined that the proposed zoning would generate fewer trips during peak hours than the existing CNC zone, mitigating concerns about traffic. As well, on-site parking is intended to be provided to support the proposed development. Secondly, the site is zoned and designated for commercial in the existing outline plan and, and is not a new commercial site to the neighborhood. Finally, incorporating mid-rise residential development with commercial development as well along a major arterial roadway utilizes existing infrastructure more efficiently while improving safety by providing additional eyes on the street. Next slide, please. Signs were also posted on the site in two locations to provide additional awareness of the proposed rezoning. Next slide. The vision of the development is a mixed use site with commercial uses along Victoria Trail, transitioning to the mid-rise development in the middle of the site to the townhouses to the eastern portion of the site. Next slide, please. The property, while never previously developed, is essentially an infill site as much of the neighborhood is already developed. The city plan supports infill of a variety of scales and densities with the proposed development using existing infrastructure, supporting transit services, as well as providing new services to the existing residents in the neighborhood. Next slide. And while district planning is still in the draft stage, the site is located near a potential local node, which is intended to support commercial and residential development. Next slide. The residential portion of the development would be supported by CMHC financing that will provide up to 25% of the units as affordable housing. Bring more affordable housing and rental products is a need that the city has identified and is currently experiencing, especially with the current shifts in the economy. A recent report to council in August also identified the need for more rental and affordable housing. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so while it's understood as well that um, council has been looking to see uh, a supportive housing and secondary suites included in direct controls for consistency, these uses were not included with our, um, were not identified during our review. However, we are not opposed to their, inclu their inclusion in our direct control. Um, and we ask that council considers our application today in order to achieve the requirements of our CMHC financing um, in order, um, which, is, which is subject to the rezoning and the subdivision of this site. This proposed rezoning is compatible with the direction of the city plan. It would bring much needed housing to the city, um, utilize existing services, provide new services to the community, um, and within the inner city itself. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for the presentation, Mr. Yu. Um, colleagues, do you have any questions for Mr. Yu? Councillor Tang? Um, did you say you're financing CMHC? 
the, the residential portion is intended to be financed through CM CMHC financing, yes. Canadian Mortgage and Housing yes, Corporation. Yes, the housing, yeah. So, 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 so this is, will also uh, contribute towards our affordable housing goal, you said? That's okay. correct, yeah. Um, and, and what's the percentage? Uh, we are looking at 20, at least 25% of the units are required to meet, um, to meet the meet at, at or below the median rental market in, for the city of Edmonton. Great, thank you very much. That's really very interesting. Great, thank you, Councillor Tang. Any, oh, Councillor Wright, go ahead. Hi, I'm just looking at the administration's report on this. Um, there, there was a concern noted about uh, no more commercial, or there's already enough commercial development in the area. Um, how much would, would this rezoning add to that? This rezoning would not actually add to any commercial land to the uh, neighborhood. This site is already zoned CNC, so it is already a commercial site. Okay. Just never was developed. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Those, that's it for you right now. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yu. And uh, now in opposition, we have Mr. Hendrickson. You can come on down to the podium. Yeah, you can just walk right across here and down to the podium. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. You'll have uh, five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've never done anything like this before, but as far as the zoning for their, our neighborhood, we, like what few of us had concerns, we did reach out with emails and phone calls. But we never got anything back. I don't know why. We just didn't. But there was a study uh, with the was it Strathcona County a zoning study a while ago in that neighborhood that limited. Uh, residential intensification to zero. It was then amended in 2017, allowing low density. Now, what they're intending to do is not low density. It's actually going to, I would say, medium to high when you're going to a six-story apartment. And that just, I don't think, is right for our area. Um, if you wanted to add the additional housing, why not keep it to what that study limited to at the low density? Um, adding all these extra units by our green spaces in our parks, do they do any, any, any research into environmental impacts for our neighborhoods? Um, we're really close to Hermitage Park. Um, do they ever take anything like that into consideration? Did it take into consideration people's privacy when you're building these, these multiple story buildings behind all these single family homes, all these people looking into your yards or potentially um, additional foot traffic building these towers, the community at the bottom of the hill of the park, well, they're basically gonna get blocked out of their sun. Like these are all things that I don't think are taken into consideration for the people that are already there. And maybe they might wanna adjust some of their planning and or even keep it as is zoned as it is for a commercial and maybe just try and develop your commercial and make your money that way. That's kinda all I have. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I'll just have you hold on. You may have uh, some questions from counselors. Any questions? Counselor Paquette, do you have any questions? Uh, I don't actually have a lot of questions. Um, you know, I guess I would say, like, I, I've heard what you said, um, but in the interest of city building and the need for uh, um, more options, I'm just wondering if you might want to expand on that. Yes, Mr. Hendrickson, that was... Uh, my, my plan for developing the space for more options? Is that what he's, he's wanting to know? Or the limits that sh are there and should be carried forward to the low density, and they can do their options at a low density? instead of cramming multiple, multiple units. Okay, so I, I, I hear what you're saying, but uh, one of the issues that we're facing as a city is that uh, the more we spread out and have low density on the outskirts of the city, which, uh, you know, this is right on the uh, edge of the city, um, the more difficult it is to actually 
uh, deliver services. Uh, because it's sort of like, we, you know, the, the finances the city has is like a pat of butter. The bigger the piece of bread, so the bigger the city, the harder it is to spread it out. And so when we add a little bit more density and gentle density, what we do is we actually add that sort of to that pat of butter so we can actually provide better services. So long term, I'm just wondering uh, how you feel about that. Well, a six-story tower isn't really ideal for our community. Um, and it doesn't really go with that Strathcona joint study that kept it to a low density just because of issues that come across with all the industrial and potential hazards that come from there. When I moved okay. in, we couldn't, I, I, we couldn't I'm build. I'm not following that part. Can you expand on that, the industrial hazards? Well, it just says there's a joint uh, planning study with Strathcona County. Um, after the assessment, this is just being summarized, that the risk assessment shows that a low density residential development, including garage garden and secondary suites in Edmonton can go forward. And that's what it's capped at. And that's just, I'm, I'm assuming it's, if something blows up over there, they wanna keep it, keep the casualty down or damages lower. Okay, um, so this, as far as I'm aware, this plot of land is pretty far away from any industrial development. So I'm just, it's, I, I, I guess I'm not following. If, if you can explain. It's right that. by my house and I'm in that, that area. So it's right there. Okay, because I used to live just right up in the, uh, <laughs> the white condos there. And so I guess I'm just, I'm trying to envision what you're talking about. And I, I'm not yeah, seeing. Yeah, so when we applied to have a basement suite, when we originally moved in, it was declined because at that point in time, they wanted to keep the, what they're calling the, the population density at what it was. Then in 2017, it was revised and it was allowed to do the low density and that's for the area. But now you, the developers want to do medium to high density. Why isn't it being kept to what the agreement was at low? Right, okay, so you know what, that's a very good question. Um, I'll ask administration that, and uh, again, so I, I, as I'm understanding, your, your main concern here is about safety. Well, safety, yes, for that, and then for us and everybody there would be the population density keeping it down. And like, I do realize okay. we, there's so housing So this is the issue. part I'm not understanding, because I, as I said, I, I live in that area. Uh, and, and I live there, sir. The, yeah, and I just don't, I'm not sure, like as far as population density, that it's very minimal at this point, so. Yes, but they, they want to raise it quite a bit, do they not? Um, I think that if we wanted to raise it a lot, I mean, we'd be talking about 18 story towers, wouldn't you think? Like, the, I think six is sort of. Uh, I'd, I'd say if, you, you, if you're downtown and 18 story, but if you're on the, where we are in our community, in our neighborhood, a six story is quite large. And if you go over to where they're building the six stories over in Beverly, it, 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 it's, it's big. Okay, but I, I so Beverly, I may need a, a second round, <laughs> Madam Chair. So I will just leave it at that. And uh, it looks like Councillor Wright has some questions. Okay, thank you, Councillor Paquette. Councillor Wright? Hi, I'm, so um, the Strathcona County report that you've got there as far as safety, is that from the like Strathcona refineries on Baseline Road across the river or is it further east or north? I believe so, I'm not an expert. I oh, okay, okay, I was just, because um, I, I think there's probably more of a concern from those in the, um, sort of in the Capilano Gold Bar area for those. Um, I mean, we've also, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with with our city plan that was um, approved back in 2020, 21, <laughs> um, which does talk about sort of densification of our of our communities. Are you familiar with that at all, or vaguely? Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So what we're trying to look at is, yeah, sort of look at look at higher density. Um, in not just, I guess, mature areas, um, but um, in other areas of the city, that helps to reduce, you know, some of the costs with higher infrastructure, bringing it out to, um, 
you know, some of the newer undeveloped neighborhoods um, and, and keep our uh, overall costs down. I, I guess that, that's all I wanted to sort of clarify with you as far as the safety concerns and, and if you were aware of what the, what the city plan outlines. Yeah, so it's putting the, the cost above the potential safety well, I'm no, not definitely not. I mean, I'm looking at safety across the city, and like I said, I think there's, you know, with the refineries blowing up, there's more of an issue to those in in the, the Gold Bar Capilano area. And I, I and I'm not familiar with the report that you're yeah, well, referencing. Maybe we should postpone this until we're all more familiar with it. Because when I got the notification, it was like a little blast zone, and the whole area is in there. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, does the report indicate like how many? It you know, just said it, it was going to be capped to, and this is to the, the low density residential. Okay. That's what it's going to be approved as for adding to that community. But this is a Strathcona report, not. Yeah, it's a Strathcona Edmonton joint study. In 2017. That and was amended in 2017. Okay. And since that time, the city plan has come out as well. I, I'm just wondering. Uh, the, what is the city plan? Does this, can, would it not work with that? Like. Or does the city plan of just intent the population like the intensification of an area does that take precedence over the safety concerns that these well, experts so have what, presented to us in the past? D does the report that you're looking at does that outline sort of what the potential risk is uh, of this this happening? Well, if I knew, I mean, I, if I knew this was going to like this was going to happen, I probably would have brought the actual report that yeah. I received. Um, but I would guess that somebody in this building would be able to get their hands on it and maybe understand it better than myself would. But to my understanding of it, it's low density. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll ask administration if they're familiar with it when, when the time comes. I, I'm just wondering, you know, if it, if it is that much of a risk, then maybe we shouldn't have any houses within that. Well, the, uh, they did the assessment and they said it, that's an acceptable risk to what's there. Um, but if the city wanted to give me whatever my house is worth, I would move. Okay. I grew up right by the Strathcona refinery. Like it's, so it's, uh, well, I can <laughs> see them. I'm right there. Yeah. Like, I like the neighborhood as it is. And if they wanted to add houses, that's fine. It'd be. But these towers they're talking about, and I don't agree with that. I don't think anybody in our neighborhood does. It's just. The, well, few, I, that, the few that tried to reach out really didn't get anywhere. Yeah. And the consultation with the people in our neighborhoods, or, there was none. But I don't know what I guess that's the obligation a, of a developer is. A risk is. assessment that those people moving into those properties would have to consider for themselves, I guess. Well, so. they're probably not going to know. And if the price is right, they probably wouldn't care. Okay. okay, thank you. I will ask admin if they're familiar with that, that study. Thanks. Council Wright, can you move the second round? So moved. Thank you. Can I get a seconder? Second. Second. Thank you. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. Councillor Paquette, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Henderson, I, I just want you to know I take your concern seriously. So we will be asking administration about this. Hopefully uh, in this time period, they've had a chance to pull, that, pull this report up. Um, so I, as far as build though, uh, so I just want to make sure that I've got your concern clear. It's not the density you're worried about. It's the density paired with what you feel is a potential danger from an, from an industrial accident. Well, there's that. And there's, I don't think anybody wants, that's currently in the area, the six-story towers. So, uh, but like, so so you, you can take, you can take the two points. The root of, actually, Mr. Henderson. Is your concern the safety concern? Primarily, or is it the density concern primarily? But this will help a lot. I think they go hand in hand. But. Okay, so if it's the safety concern, are you currently very concerned for everyone who lives in the area? I think that when we moved in, 
because we I had no that. idea. I don't feel so we're like there. The, what is there right now? If if there is a serious danger, I don't think that what's there right now is an acceptable risk. If there's a serious danger, well, why so don't people consult or look at that report and come up with the decision yourselves? And I think I, that's all I could really say. Okay, so. And that's so on a scale, like if we had the scales, which one would he weigh heavier on you? The, the potential danger or the density? I'd say it's just you'd go even. So it's even, it's even Stephen Fry. Okay. All right. So I'll ask about the danger because if, if you're that concerned about the danger, I'm not sure if uh, that neighborhood is, uh, I mean, that, that's a serious concern. I, I'm, I won't give any advice on that. But uh, next is um, uh, the density. I, I happen to live in a neighborhood now that has um, more than a few six story condos around. And I can tell you, I, I haven't really noticed that it's impacted anything. And I'm just wondering if you have any neighbors or friends who are not neighbors, but friends who live in uh, newer neighborhoods with, uh, with those condos and you've been able to observe how it impacts the community. Well, my friends that lived in McConaughey moved because of all the, I guess, more people, more problems, right? It's, okay. It's just like, I just think I'm hearing like you. Unfortunately, the trend of this city is that there is going to be increasing. Well, there's always, there's like, the city's growing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And we need more houses. Don't get me wrong. We need more housing options. Just but, not there. But maybe not going as high as a, a six-story tower in a community filled with single-family homes. Well, but if I recall, just across... You, you can recall, the not other just section, across. Some, there are apartment buildings. There's, there's the four-story walk-ups that are quite a ways away on the corner by their tracks. And well, then there's, then there's the two more. Very, very well. I, I live there, I know what I'm talking about. And then there's two more just on the other side of Hook Road that are offset quite a bit that were originally when the developers were trying to build one a 20-story, of course, back in the 80s whenever they built them. Yeah. But it was agreed to four. Okay. Well, can I can I ask what at, at what point does a building then become a tower? At what uh, what how many stories? I would. Well, I would say anything over four. Okay. So anything different from what's already there. Okay. All right. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'm going to ask about the safety to administration because I think you very raise a very valid point. Uh, and I would definitely like to get some clarity on that. So thank you so much for uh, answering questions and for coming out. Uh, it's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Mr. Hendrickson. Yeah, you can have a seat and uh, we'll go on to questions of administration. Please consider me signed up. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Said, please consider me signed up on the list. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Paquette. All right, thank you. So to administration, I'm not sure if you've had time to pull up uh, any reports on the safety for the area um, and potential of an industrial accident and the impact on uh, that potentially that could have on neighborhoods that are uh, a couple kilometers away. Councillor, we have... Uh, 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 the study that uh, is being referred to was a study conducted by Strathcona County, uh, wherein uh, large swaths of lands uh, were considered as high risk uh, as part of future development potential of uh, the oil, oil and gas industry. Subsequent to that, City of Edmonton conducted a joint study wherein uh, we assessed those risks and we readjusted those contours. And this, and, uh, uh, this was brought to the council in 2017 and uh, after reassessing the risks, and it was supported then. Councillor, just to add, uh, so this area was just within that original joint land use planning study. Uh, within it, it outlined uh, some general prescriptions around when risk assessments would be required, and they were required when they're within 500 meters of heavy industrial uses. And for context, this site is about 1.5 kilometers away from the uh, industrial use to the east across the river in Strathcona County. Yeah, okay, so because I'm taking uh, the residents' concern seriously, um, and uh, what I'm hearing is that, so 
the, the report says one thing and we're assessing a different thing. Can we just sort of, can you sort of bring that together for me so we can all have clarity? Councillor, uh, we, uh, we did a second report, uh, a second analysis, uh, subsequent to what was done as part of joint uh, planning study, and wherein uh, uh, it went into much more detail than the initial uh, high-level analysis, and that's how we uh, arrived at the conclusion of 500-meter setback. Okay. All right. Now, is it possible to get that report sent to Mr. Hendrickson uh, so he can also read it and it might, might provide some comfort to him with his safety concern? We would certainly do that, Councillor. Okay, that would be appreciated. I hope Mr. Hendrickson, uh, um, you open your email on that when you get it. Um, so my next question then is, um, uh, do we may not have this calculation, but do we know um, if, if this is approved, what the, what the density difference will be in the neighborhood? Um, yes, we do, Councillor. Yeah. Um, the change in density, sorry, I'm just grabbing the number here, is anticipated to be from 3.46 units per net residential hectare to 3.5. Okay, or so. Sorry, to 35.1. Okay. So, uh, so a five point increase, or a BP uh, increase. A point, a 0.5 units per net residential hectare point. increase. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. So, um, and, and what's our target for new neighborhoods? 35. So this brings us in line with uh, what we expect in, in new developments as well. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, one thing that wasn't raised by uh, the speaker, but um, I was wondering about is, uh, I know I've been to the area. It's an enormous amount of green space, like just huge. Um, but do we see any impact on uh, potential for future like uh, leisure developments uh, in the area if this goes through? It seems to me that there's enough space uh, and we've got right across the road a lot of soccer uh, area. So, uh, you know, I just want to be able to mention that I asked this and that it was addressed. I'm sorry, can I understand the question one more time, Councillor? Uh, just the, the, the impact on uh, green space uh, that uh, the community is used to right now. There will be no change in green space. Yeah, okay, good. That's, that was what I thought, but I had to ask it. All right. Um, yeah, other than that, I, I'm not sure I have uh, any other questions. That was great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Paquette. Um, Madam Clerk, can you remove me from the list because my questions have been answered? And Councillor Tang, you can go ahead. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, so this is a longstanding vacant site under the current zoning. How long has it been vacant for? It, it's never been developed. So since the beginning, the, the, the neighborhood was there. Correct. It's never been developed. Yes. I'm sorry, how, so how old is the neighborhood? <laughs> like several decades? Is that what we're talking about? Sorry, I'll check on the At least. Um, yeah, okay. Um, because if the current zoning under CNC, I'm just wondering you know, if, if, if there ever was an opportunity why was it ever never developed? Oh, sorry, your mic. Your mic. I'm sorry. That's really a question of the market demand for it, and, and some of that has to do with just the available uses and the, and the restrictions they're in for the CNC um, zone. And so part of the, the purpose of this is to lift some of those restrictions and to allow for a more diverse set of uses to be accommodated within this area. Because if it's not developed, it will continue to likely remain vacant. Correct. Um, I mean, it looks like, you know, a brownfield with nothing on it for perhaps another few decades. Yes. Uh, because under the current zoning, there seems to be some challenges with just opening up that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, the, the market isn't there. Someone saw this land and said, hey, I can do something with this. Um, and for them, being able to access the CMHC funding also probably helps. And so this 
direct control is there and has been crafted to help facilitate this moving forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And uh, Councillor Paquette asked some of my questions around sort of the density up in this area. And I was also just wondering to that, um, that distance that you were just referencing, Mr. Pollock, uh, 1.6 kilometer, what is that in reference to in terms of low, medium, and high risk um, away from industrial? Uh, the 1.5 kilometers uh, was just the site approximate distance from the nearest refinery across the river. Uh, within our risk assessment guidelines in that report that was provided or will be provided, uh, it's a 500 meter threshold from any heavy oh. industrial that will require an additional risk assessment to determine what uses are appropriate within that area. I see. So 500 will be like high risk and, and, and so 1.6 is, is much lower. 500 meters is a trigger for us to investigate uh, the risk level. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, no, you you, you mentioned that I, I didn't have the context for it. Um, I think those are those are all my questions. Thank you, Councillor Ting. Councillor Rutherford. Yes, thank you. You're doing a great job chairing. Um, yeah, this this actually twigs for me because I used to work for Strathcona County. Um, so. You know, and I pulled up this report and I briefly skimmed the section on the risk assessment in that, you know, Major Industrial Accident Council of Canada defines acceptable risk as the annual individual risk of a one chance in a million of a fatality. And it does talk about high density residential and commercial as kind of between a one in one million and a 0 0.3 in a million risk. So I guess my question is, what special consideration do we have beyond that 500 meters? Because I'm pretty sure, from my recollection working for Strathcona County, the blast zone is bigger than 500 meters of, of fatality risk for the refinery area. Councillor, if I may answer, uh, the risk is a measure of consequence and probability. Yeah, so, absolutely. So one in a million is uh, for our regular development. Point five in a, point three in a million is when we are looking at sensitive uses wherein uh, the occupants cannot extricate themselves from okay. a situation okay, that's which good. would be a senior's home or a daycare facility. So but if, if it's low density, that's 10 in a million. If it's high density, it's one in a million. So we're still increasing potential risk of fatalities if we are densifying an area that is within that, that range. Am I correct? No, su sub you are correct. Subsequent to that, we did a further analysis wherein we took a deep dive into it and this was reduced uh, to a shorter distance and only it is only applicable on uh, the situations wherein we have sensitive uses like a daycare and all. For other okay. uses, the risk is lower. So uh, what did that, why, why was 500 meters as a setback chosen as acceptable? Because I, if I'm, and again, like I'm just going from like my, my memory from when I worked for Strathcona County, I remember the, the I remember seeing the map of, of the risk area, a zone within Strathcona County and within the city of Edmonton. I remember working, I mean like, oh, I will die if <laughs> there's a refinery accident. Um, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm recalling a very fuzzy part of my memory but I do remember it would cover that hermitage area. So I guess I'm just trying to ask like why the five, why the 500 meter is chosen and is that our only consideration from a risk management emergency preparedness perspective? And can I ask that in a public hearing? I don't know if I can ask about emergency preparedness. I would say absolutely not. It is not our only consideration. There's many other things that the city does to make sure that Edmontonians are safe. I, know, I am completely veered out of public hearing territory, I know, which, but I think it's really important to stress yeah, that here, I, I think seeing as this has come up. We've got an Office of Emergency Management. We work with Strathcona County. Uh, so and maybe we it's work a with subsequent. fire and police. So the reason I'm asking is more for a subsequent for, to be clear than the bylaw itself. So I think, is there, would there be a willingness to provide a subsequent with what considerations go into that, that kind of? When, when council approved the reductions uh, or that study, uh, we can provide that uh, offline, uh, both the report and the, the work that, would that be, was and done. And just to, yeah, just to 
just to get us up to speed on that because I think it tweaks something that I wasn't thinking of, so that would be great. I don't think it needs to be stalling this project by any means, um, but that's why I was asking the questions more for a subsequent. Thank you. My suggestion would be to get that report first and then a uh, conversation with Mr. Corbold, Corbold, our city manager, sorry, Andre, to understand further uh, all of the things that we do in that space for emergency management preparedness and then explore a subsequent motion if it was needed after that. That sounds like a really prudent plan forward and I will heed that advice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Councillor Stevenson. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Maybe shifting away from the risk, I uh, appreciate the, the questions that have been there. I uh, just wanted to note, you know, I noticed that uh, supportive housing was missing from, from the list of uses. Uh, I understand, you know, we typically do want to see those in, in a residential zone. Um, uh, but there are some safeguards that are being put in place for, for applications moving forward to make sure that we're, we're always including those as a matter of course. That's correct, Councillor. Great. And I think, you know, I think the this is just a product of DCs locking us in for so long. Um, I don't think that the actual need for the, the supportive housing use will be any in any imminent uh, need, but there's an opportunity, you know, after the new zoning bylaws pass, I believe the work plan also speaks to kind of going back and revisiting all of our direct control zones, so there could be an opportunity there to, to address the issue. Yes, I think that's the correct way of approaching it. Great. Uh, then I just want to confirm... Um, in terms of the site plan that's provided in the DC, it, it does show a sort of a designated parking area behind the commercial, between, between the mid-rise and the commercial. I just want to confirm that the setback regulations don't allow parking in the setbacks, but just wondering if there would ever be parking, you know, flanking some of the public space that's surrounding the site or because by virtue of the site plan that only shows surface parking in that, that designated area between the mid-rise and residential, that that's sort of where it would be contained within. Um, the, the, I believe the figure you're referring to is the sketch um, with the, the multiple colors. I yeah. just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the intent is certainly to, to do that. However, there, there may be slight shifts because this is conceptual. Um, when it comes to the detailed design of the site. Okay, yeah, I guess it would just be a concern with sort of the row housing potentially backing, having having parking facing onto the public space. There is, there is a provision in the zone that speaks about main floor patios at grade should be constructed with privacy railings and landscaping screens and face public spaces. Mm -hmm. And it speaks to commercial development to the west and row housing development to the east. But, but th could that wording also suggest that the row housing facing onto the public space would also provide overlook and passive surveillance? Um, I'll check on the, the passive surveillance, but in terms of the parking, there is a provision within here that it doesn't occur during, uh, in, within the setback. In the setback. But, but there could still be, I mean, you could have the, the three meter setback and then parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's, that's just the risk. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think I think the opportunity to develop this site uh, is is a good one, and I, I like the mix of uses uh, that are proposed. I think I also think, sorry, I should mention too. I think the pedestrian access spine, sort of through the development, is a really positive feature. Would there be options in the future for adding uh, a walkway to cross Victoria Trail that aligns with that walkway? Um, if someone from transportation can can speak to that. Councillor, so part of this, uh, the site plan, um, the northerly access that is uh, across the street from the access to the soccer site um, will have a pedestrian signal. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I'm sorry if I missed that when you mentioned it earlier, but that's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I think those are all of my, my questions. Thanks. I'll move the second round. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Can I get a seconder? Second. Oh. Pardon me, no need for a second round. I'm just on the board to close public Please. hearing if there's no other questions and to speak. Okay, thank you, Councillor Paquette, for letting us know. Uh, any other questions or any um, questions to speakers from? No? Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Paquette. Actually, first we'll have to close the bylaw. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. and do I have someone? Uh, I will move. Uh, that we close item uh, 3.14 and 3.15. And uh, because of cross-reference, do 
do I have to say both or just close uh, the item? Second. I think it's okay just to close the item like that for now. Yeah, okay, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Tang. Please vote. We have all the votes. Thank you, please display the vote. And that has carried. Anyone to speak? Go ahead, Councillor Paquette. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I've got only one screen today, so my camera probably keeps going out every time I move over to the, uh, to the actual report. Um, so, yeah, th this is, you know, this is an interesting one in that, uh, you know, as we grow the city, we're going to bump up against, uh, you know, sort of unexpected circumstances. And uh, the speaker, Kena, Mr. Hendrickson, raised some really good points. And I'm really appreciative of, of him taking the time and to raise that because uh, now we're all going to have more clarity on, uh, you know, the impact of industrial development and communities and decisions we make and how that uh, fits in. And uh, that's actually really important because as we expand, we're going to encounter more unexpected items, uh, especially in a city as large as Edmonton, as complex as Edmonton. Um, you know, uh, the speaker also raised an interesting point, more people, more problems, as I think is the way he put it. And uh, I think that it's that that was actually a really apt way to put it. Um, if you live all by yourself out in the middle of nowhere, you're probably not going to encounter any people problems except internally. Uh, but the more you get more people together, the more you get that friction and frizzing. And uh, it's just sort of the way it goes. It's, and it's the good and bad of, of cities in that, uh, you know, the more uh, people you have, the more you're going to encounter um, people don't, who don't uh, rub you the right way. The benefit is that you also encounter people who inspire you or spur you on to uh, interesting thoughts or interesting actions. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's finding that balance. And because we have a goal in the city plan of, of, uh, of this density, which, by the way, isn't even very dense compared to actual major municipalities, our density uh, requirements are still quite low, in my opinion. Um, maybe some of that bold proposals that uh, Ms. McCabe might be bringing to us. But um, in this area, I, I, I've lived in this area. I know this area. I take my kids to, uh, to soccer right across the street. And I think that what, we've, what you can reasonably surmise is that uh, these developments, while may not be super pleasing to everyone, um, do fit into the character of the neighborhood. And uh, again, it's not going to be 100% buy-in. There are going to be people who are not happy, but that is the process. Um, the people who move in there will certainly be happy. It'll be their new home, their new neighborhood, and they'll be making new connections and um, frankly, strengthening the voice of the, of the community. And with everything that's gone on with Hermitage uh, right across the street and the Dontar site, I think that this is something that uh, would be uh, welcomed, especially by folks in the Hermitage area. Um, uh, because it will mark that uh, this area is still developing. It hasn't stopped and therefore they don't have to worry too much about their property uh, and property prices. Um, there's a lot to juggle here. And, uh, but at the end of the day, it, it goes back to that analogy where we just gotta make that, that slice of butter a little bit bigger to get over all that bread if we wanna increase services. And that's what Edmontonians are mostly asking for. They just want to see value for their dollar. They want to see that what they put in uh, comes back out in the form of, of the services that they receive and enjoy. And uh, we are obviously, especially after COVID, stretched to the limit. People have noticed that, they're long, that the, the, the grass hasn't even been cut on boulevards because we are stretched that far. And so there's a lot of reasons um, to go forward with this. I know that there are a few concerns, but um, at the end of the day, I think that this will be uh, an attribute and benefit to the community and will bring more people into the north side 
who will invariably talk about how great our corner of the city is. And so for those reasons and more, Madam Chair, I am going to be supporting this and I hope that uh, everyone else does as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paquette. And I just would like to acknowledge administration because I saw you uh, walking over to our speaker and getting his contact information to make sure to keep him updated. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. And if we Thank could you have. Thank you for letting me know that, yes. Chair Yeah, because you, yeah, you can't uh, see the, you don't have the benefit of seeing all that. So I did want to let you know as well. And uh, please, can I ask someone to uh, move the first reading? I would be very happy to uh, move first reading of uh, items 3.14 and 3.15. Second. Thank you. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. And uh, Madam Chair, I'd be happy to move second reading of the same. Second. Thank you, Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. That has carried. Okay, and Madam Chair, uh, I would like to move consideration uh, for the same. Second. Please vote on consideration. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. That has carried. And Madam Chair, I would move uh, third reading of Charter Bylaw 20298. Second. Thank you. Please vote. Have all, we have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. And then we have just, Madam Chair, a recommendation on 3.14. Thank you. Can I have uh, someone move the recommendation, please? Yes, I will move that recommendation, Madam Chair. Second. Thank you, Councillor Paquette and Councillor Stevenson. Please vote. We have all the votes. Please display the vote. And that has carried. All right, so I believe we only needed one vote on that for the uh, recommendation. Um, next, we'll be moving on to item 3.19, selected by Councillor Hamilton. Do we have a presentation? Please go ahead. Good afternoon. This application is to rezone a site in the Sherwood neighborhood from the RF1 single detached residential zone to the RA7 low rise apartment zone. The proposed RA7 zone would allow for multi unit ho housing up to 14.5 meters in height. That's approximately four stories. Next slide, please. The site is an excellent location for increased density due to its proximity to active travel options, open space, and commercial amenities. It is located on the corner of 93A Avenue and 156th Street. The site is surrounded by roadways on three sides. It has quick access to active transportation with the future LRT stop at 156th Street, bus service along 95th Avenue, a bike lane along 153rd Street, and there are amenities such as commercial and open space, and this is all within six minutes walking from this site. Next slide, please. Administration sought feedback from the public through advance notice 
information on the city's website and on-site signage. We heard concerns from adjacent property owners around the loss of privacy and skyline views, impacts on the existing sewage infrastructure, increase in crime and traffic congestion, uh, uncertainty regarding the access to the site, and some concerns around uh, mature trees on the site that would need to be cut down uh, to facilitate the proposed development. Next slide, please. The key differences between the existing RF1 zone and the proposed RA7 zone is that the RA7 allows for increased density and increased building height. The RA7 will require greater interior and flanking setbacks of three meters, and this helps to mitigate the impact of the proposed development on adjacent properties. Next slide, please. This application aligns with the city plan direction for secondary corridors, which seek an increase in density through low and medium scale buildings that are supported by mass transit. Next slide, please. In summary, administration is in support of this application. It provides the opportunity for increased density and housing diversity in the Sherwood neighborhood, and it aligns with the city plan goals for secondary corridors. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I see we're at uh, 326 now, so we should be taking a break at this time. So Mr. Mahi, uh, we will, you're in chambers, correct? Right here, hi. So uh, we'll be um, convening again at uh, 345, and then you'll have your turn to speak. And then uh, Mr. Steinwand, I know we had called for you earlier and didn't hear a response from you. Are you? online yes I am I'm sorry I missed your call okay great just wanted to make sure you're there we'll be back and uh, at 345 and we will continue to hear from speakers thank you
Good afternoon, counselors. We are live from council chamber. Thank you. Um, so we'll get started again. We don't have to do a roll call or should we do a roll call? We should yeah? do a roll call. Okay, yes, let's you. do a roll call. Councillor Wright. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Knack. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Stevenson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Paquette. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Tang. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the mayor will be joining us a little bit later. Councillor Hamilton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Rutherford. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Salvador. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Cartmel. He may be joining us shortly. Councillor Rice. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Councillor Jans. Hello. Hi. All right. So we're all, mostly all here. We're going to uh, carry on with uh, listening to our speakers. Um, we have in favor, Mr. Mahi. Uh, would you like to come down here to the podium, please? Hi, welcome. So you'll have five minutes to, uh, you don't have a presentation, you're just here to speak, is that right? Oh, you do have a presentation? Okay, great, if we could cue that up. Okay, great, so you'll have five minutes here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tony Mahay and I'm the owner of Omega Finishing Solutions. I've developed over 80 infills in Edmonton about 100 commercial and rezoned, uh, subdivided about 25 properties in Edmonton. Next slide, please. So the proposed rezoning is from RF1 to RA7. Uh, we do intend on building two to maximum three-story multi-purpose commercial and residential building. Um, the site will include on-site parking and we have dedicated garbage disposal area. The entrance of this proposal will be from the rear alley. Uh, next page, please. So the rezoning, we've looked at opportunities for obviously not just ourselves as developers, but the city of Edmonton. The first item is we'd like to have a potential list price of two to 350,000 a unit, which we feel is um, on the lower end of the scale and more affordable. Um, that way we're able to capitalize 90% of the market. Um, not being overpriced. For the community growth, we are building density closer to the central core of Edmonton. Um, we have looked at the future um, Edmonton public transportation, and we do see that we are on the LRT line and uh, or the future LRT line. Um, also, high density growth encourages the population to engage with amenities within the community. Um, currently, I've developing a row housing project in Sherwood. Um, just maybe a few weeks ago, I got another property rezoned from uh, RF1 to RF3. And this will be my uh, third development in the community of Sherwood. Next page, please. So primarily, we want to focus on main floor being retail. Um, there's already a building which is DC2 next to us, which already has the liquor store, which already has the cannabis and pizza. So we want to focus more on a, a medical approach, uh, a medical facility with a pharmacy, um, something within that range. Uh, we do want to provide on-site parking because I know a lot of residents have concern about that. So we will dedicate a certain amount of uh, parking stalls. Um, Given that this is going to be a new building, we do want to create space for a community garden. We do want to have a recreational common area, um, possibility of green charging stations. Um, I'm always uh, a fan of going as green as I can. Um, we are aligned with the city's uh, future planning and the lot size is 150 by 150. Um, I know a few people have had concerns about trees. <clears throat> On every property that, is, that I've developed, I only remove what I need to remove and I do keep as much green space as I can. 
So my other development in Sherwood, I've removed what I needed to, but I have about three large trees still remaining. Um, I'd probably say a respectable amount of shrubs that um, the only uh, landscaping that I have to complete on that project is just grass, because I've kept my existing trees and shrubs. Uh, next slide, please. So <laughs> I've built single family homes. I've built a lot of multifamily. I focused on commercial and the next step for my company and the growth um, to add to the city of Edmonton is doing multi-story apartments. Um, it's something that I'm uh, quite proud of to be able to get to that level and um, I feel I'm following within the city's footsteps. Uh, the next page, please. Uh, thank you, I think uh, the next, there is one more page. Next, it would be the rezoning map. I'm not sure if you can zoom in. <clears throat> you can continue okay, talking yeah, so about it. <laughs> In general, we're not coming into this neighborhood um, rezoning to something that uh, doesn't fit the profile. There is a lot of DC2 zoning. There already is a RA7 zoning. Um, there's RF4, the CNC. So the variety of zoning in this neighborhood is something that I feel we're within, uh, within the rights to apply for this application. Um, any development that I've done, I've always wanted to and have achieved on adding to the community, not ever taking away. Um, thank you very much. <coughs> and thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mahe, for joining us. Uh, questions, colleagues, questions to uh, uh, Tony Mahe. Seeing none, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, all right, next we will go to uh, uh, Rolf Steenwind uh, in opposition. Uh, he is joining us uh, uh, virtually. Please go ahead, you have five minutes to make your presentation. All right, I've been watching this for since you started here and uh, I think I'm wasting my time. I see that you guys um, listen to us, residents that are actually in the neighborhood and say, yeah, that's great. One, two, three readings, we're done, okay? But I'm gonna read to you the letter I wrote because I've been living in this neighborhood for 51 years and I'm not really happy with a four story going up directly across the street from my house, looking in my windows, right? I'm opposed to building an apartment directly across the street from my house with a view directly into my bedroom window on that side of the house. I believe there is a privacy issue with a four story apartment directly, even a three story directly across the street. We will no longer be able to leave our curtains open without fear of being watched or filmed while inside my own home. With more people in the neighborhood, the chances of higher crime rate in a quiet neighborhood is greater. There's already a liquor store on the corner and a dispensary as well, as the fellow has said, and that building isn't full of commercial. We don't need more commercial, okay? With the recent changes in the bylaw enabling building, there's constant light source now on that corner. It is always bright can't sleep at night because of the light, right? And I don't imagine it's gonna get any better. <sighs> there is apartments on both sides of the street north of me, and there are constantly police cars parked along there with stores come robberies, and I have no wish to be caught up in one because I live across the street. We have been in this house since 1971, and this is not the first time that these bylaws have been proposed. I remember my neighbors against them and my father didn't want it and neither do I. The neighbors are older than I and don't do computers and internet. I have spoke to them, to them and they are opposed as well. Residents seem to be always opposed to this. It seems to be your plan, not our plan. It used to be a joke in the neighborhood that once somebody moved into Meadowlark, they never moved out. But houses south of me on my block have turned into rentals with these recently recent bylaw, bylaw changes. Don't turn my neighborhood into a low rental community, please. I believe, believe this will directly affect the resale value of my home 
Nobody wants to live across the street from an apartment, as everybody has been saying along this thing here. The last bylaw change took away my driveway. I am now a criminal for parking in my own garage. Don't make my daughter a porn star because she forgot to close the curtains. Please consider how you would feel with this going up directly across the street from you. All right. Uh, very much that I don't want this. I've been here a long time term resident. So why don't you consider what the people in the neighborhood feel, not just your little club here. You guys come up with a plan and you force it down our throats. You know, if you got a problem with the, with the, uh, with the uh, services, hey, charge me more. I'm willing to pay. I don't know what else I got to say here with that, you know. Yeah, Thank I think that's about it, man. Thank you. This is something I ever do. This is like not my thing. Thank, thank you so much for your... Yeah, thank you so much for your comments. Read one time, read two times, read three times, and we're done. I've seen it. Okay. Okay, are you... You still have one minute and 12 seconds. Are you done or you have more to say? Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Okay. You know what I feel. You know how all the residents feel. You've been hearing it all day here. We okay. all say the same thing. Those people that are actually residents and homeowners in the neighborhoods don't want this kind of thing. This is your thing, not ours. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll go to Councillor Hamilton for questions. Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, thank you uh, for your comments today. So to summarize, I'm hearing, um, and, and I just want to put some boundaries around it. I'm sure you heard in some of our earlier discussions, we can't consider ownership or the type of residence. Um, but what I'm hearing and what you're saying, you're concerned about privacy screening. Um, uh, can you, uh, a follow-up question for you, uh, what, uh, where is your home in a, like, in, um, relative Directly to across, this site? 156th Street, 92nd Ave. So be looking okay. right in my windows. Okay, so it's on the other side of 156th Street. Um, thank you for that. And, uh, just, to, um, for, for my own clarification, um, you're in a two-story home or a single-story home? Single-story. Okay. All right. So I'm hearing a concern about privacy screening um, uh, and uh, and how that will be managed. Uh, I'm also hearing concern about the I'm going to say the the density on this site. Um, is that accurate? Um, that there's going to be sort of a large volume of residents that are going to be um, living at this site. Well, as one of the people earlier spoke to about, the more people, the more crime. Right. We have a low density neighborhood here, and I don't like the idea of me paying for the for the idea that these people in uh, in uh, uh, further out, you know, they have big lots. Put them out there, man. You know, like, why should we just because we are in, in the middle of the city have to pay for this, man? Uh, um, and I, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that concern. City Council, I should clarify, doesn't decide what sites are going to be redeveloped. That's up to the private landowner or homeowner, property owner to to bring forward. But I can certainly um, address some of uh, the concerns you brought forward here. Um, and then uh, I'm also, I, I hear about the crime and safety piece, but I'm not sure that we can address that within the land use context, but um, I'd be happy to connect with you offline to discuss um, uh, any uh, concerning behaviors uh, that you're seeing um, and potential um, opportunities for the community to meet um, or to have conversations around uh, public safety with, uh, with um, EPS uh, community folks, which is something I think that they offer to every community. Um, a constable will come and meet the community if, if that's a concern. So, um, uh, uh, so I, so to summarize, I'm hearing about privacy. I'm hearing about the, the, um, volume I'm hearing about safety. Um, and did I miss any of your considerations, uh, there, Mr. Steinwall? I think you might have summed it up there. I'm a little nervous and my mind is a little locked here, but you know, you hear this all the time. You know all the problems people are having with this. 
I have exactly the same problems and I'm willing to have these people, you know, walk ups, whatever, but not looking in my window, man. Like I've been here for 50 years. I've been paying the taxes, you know, like don't force me out of my home. Yeah, I, I understand that. And I'm going to seek clarification from administration um, on the uh, application and, and perhaps some of the privacy screening, because you're correct, that does come up in other applications where high density is concerned, uh, or higher densities, I should say. Um, so that's that's all I have for questions. But I see Councillor Knack, who used to represent this area, has clicked on, so I will go to him. Or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm done with my time, and then the mayor can go to him. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Knack? Uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Chair, for a question. I think Councillor Hamilton covered most of it, specifically related to the privacy screening. And Mr. S uh, Steinwald, I can't remember. I, I live a few blocks away, so you probably remember from when we chatted in the past. Um, you have uh, trees in front of two of the two of the three windows, and then sort of a, a bigger tree in the main part of the yard, if I remember correctly. Um, does that tree get removed for the LRT construction? I can't remember. I'm not too sure what they're doing with my trees. Um, you're right, I do have two uh, cedars next to the door and uh, one that is uh, on the corner that is uh, not as high as the bedroom window. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember because you have a larger one closer to the front of your lot, but I can't remember if, if the LRT team is, if that one was proposed to be removed as part of the construction, do you remember? Or? I have no idea what they're doing oh. with that. Okay, no, that's fine. I just thought I would double check because that was uh, that 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 I know is a, a big part of that work. Okay, thank you very much. Those are all my questions. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knack. Any other questions to the speakers? All right, we will go to questions to administration now. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Councillor Principe, for anticipating. I was about to click on. Um, so one of the concerns we heard from the speaker was uh, with respect to privacy screening um, and, and the, um, uh, the, his concern about um, the, the height of the building with respect to that feeling of exposure that some residents have um, when a higher density building is going in across uh, from them. Um, could you maybe speak to the if there's privacy screening built into this zone or, or any um, uh, anything built into that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, sorry, Mr. Steinwand. It's to uh, administration. Yeah. Councillor Hamilton, um, the privacy screening requirements. Um, uh, t typically at the development permit stage, the development officer does have some discretion on where new developments can place um, windows to minimize overlook. Um, that's typically on uh, adjacent properties. So Ralph's property is, um, as we heard, across 156th Street. It's roughly 50 meters away, um, four lanes, and will be separated eventually by the LRT as well. So um, to, to our folks at administration, um, there might be some, I'm going to say a, a natural barrier provided by the distance and the, the traffic across the, the street. That is what I'm suggesting, yes. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, and uh, I see that there's, um, and I think there's a, uh, an interesting diagram in the, the report. Um, What's the maximum density on the RF1 plus MNO zone currently? Um, how many uh, units uh, uh, or dwellings? Let me just look that up. RE7 um, is so maximum number of units. Uh, six for six. RF1 plus MNO, and then okay. RA7 um, is the minimum of 45 dwelling units per hectare, no maximum. Okay, um, so, it, so it is an increase in density. Um, uh, I recall Mr. Mayhe saying that there would be uh, parking provided on site. Is that correct in, in this application? 
if that's uh, Mr. Mayhe's intention, um, you know, we have open option parking, so it's entirely up to the development. Okay. Um, uh, and um, we discussed um, uh, the density, we've discussed the, the privacy screening. So if someone was concerned about, um, I'm going to say some of the, the privacy considerations, um, which we hear at a number of um, uh, uh, public hearings, um, that would be something that they could bring up through the development permit stage. So it would be subsequent to the, um, the public hearing. Uh, correct? That's correct. There's and, potential in that uh, design at that time. All right. Um, and could you remind me if there are notices circulated with development at the development permit stage? There are, there are notices. Um, if it's considered a class A development where it follows the zoning bylaw and there are no variances, then there is no notice. But if there are variances, it will be circulate. It will be um, sent to surrounding property owners. Okay. So, how might um, uh, uh, you know residents who are concerned about things that are dealt with in the development permit stage understand or participate in that? In a like, uh, what what's their opportunity to become engaged in that? Yeah, um, they can refer to the City of Edmonton website and our mapping tool. Um, uh, they can look at, um, uh, check back in on a regular basis for development applications surrounding their neighborhood and then get in right. touch with the city from there. Thank you. And in my dying seconds, I'll just remark um, that uh, uh, the development department uh, sort of recommend supports this application and it's because it conforms with the city plan and, and the premise of nodes and corridors, um, correct? High density along high transit routes? That's correct. This is 156th Street is considered a secondary corridor. As mentioned, it's within a few minutes walking distance from future LRT and secondary corridors, low and mid-rise development and increased density is expected. All right, thank you. Um, and I see there's other questions on the yeah. board. Thank you for your, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Stevenson. Yes, thank you. That's actually a good segue from Councillor Hamilton's questions. I just wanted to touch back on, on the city plan. And, you know, I, I take the speaker's point that um, often we're hearing from community members in opposition. Uh, but just want to confirm in terms of that, that process of building and developing the vision for city plan, just sort of the, the level of um, broad city uh, Edmontonian involvement that we had. What were, what were some of the numbers on that in terms of the number of Edmontonians that helped shape that, that vision and plan? Off the top of my head, <laughs> I want to say there were over 100,000 touch points. Um, and touch points can be anything from conversations to mail outs and that kind of thing. I'd have to verify exactly. Yeah, and I think I think maybe we've heard in the past sort of around at least at least eight thousand people sort of actively very involved in in that discussion. And I think to you know recognizing that this is a, a long term vision as well. We're also thinking about the people who maybe uh, aren't born yet or don't live in the neighborhoods yet. Is that also fair that we're also needing to consider their their perspectives and needs as well? Definitely. Great. Well, I, I appreciate the conversation. I think um, uh, and appreciate, you know, just the clarity too that this does align with the nodes and corridors, uh, which again was sort of developed uh, in, a, in a very broad way with, with many Edmontonians and input from Edmontonians. Great. That's correct, Councillor. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. Those are all my questions. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Knack. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sohi. Uh, so I just want to follow up on the um, uh, questions I asked a bit earlier. So I, I just pulled open the digital booklet for the Valley Line West LRT because, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, 156th Street, at least from 92nd Avenue to I think at least 95th, um, requires trees on both sides of the road upon completion of the LRT. Is that is that your understanding as well? Councillor, uh, by reading of the booklet, uh, we would agree with that assertion. Yeah, and it's not that's not the case in all all parts of 156th Street. There are parts where it's only one side or the other, but this is this is one of the sections um, from about 
second to a hundredth that where they're doing it on where that's recommended or not recommended, but actually I think required on both sides. Correct. Uh, what we can tell is whether or not the existing mature ones will stay um, and then it'll be supplemented by additional planting or if they're all new. Yeah, and that, that one, because th there is one closer to the front of, of uh, Mr. Steinwald's property that, that we don't have clarification yet. I know some of the trees are coming down this week uh, a little further east along the route, but not 100%. So is there anyone that is does have that knowledge about whether that specific tree would have to come down? We would have to pull up the uh, specific design and construction plans right now, uh, which aren't in front of us. Okay. Um, I know a lot so that, that that stretch of 156 has already had sort of a, a temporary sidewalk built on parts of it. And I think some of that's been done, but I, I just wanted to double check. So, uh, okay. I think those are all my remaining questions related to the privacy piece. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neck. So that concludes the questions uh, from council members to administration. At this time, I will ask if council members have any questions to administration or to the public uh, uh, on any new information arising out of the previous discussion. Uh, Councillor Hamilton. I'll just go back to Mr. Steinwand and, and see if it's clear to him now um, uh, that the um, uh, was that helpful in understanding um, there's going to be trees alongside the um, uh, LRT. So there's going to be that barrier as well as an opportunity for you to participate in the development permit process or to weigh in with your concerns about privacy um, at that time. Yeah, I understand about the trees in the summertime. That'll be great. Okay. You know? So well, what about winter. What about the other half of the year? Right. Okay. And as far as participating, we all have jobs. We all have other things to do. You know. So okay, maybe I can try. But uh, I'm not a computer geek either. This was a difficult year enough to get on this meeting. I, I appreciate that. I think um, at the development permit stage, uh, there's uh, it's it's uh, I want to say via email or phone calls. It's not a, a meeting like this, so um, that will uh, and and uh, I take your point about the deciduous trees. I think uh, I don't know that the type of tree has been decided, um, but I think uh, you know that's uh, that's helpful feedback for for the folks in the planning department um, who are hearing that as well today. Um, so those are those are my questions, and, and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to to participate in today's land use hearing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Hamilton. So that concludes uh, the questions on new information, and we are ready to close the public hearing on this bylaw. Yeah, I'll move closure of the public hearing. Second. Thank you. Second by Councillor Stevenson. Right. Okay. Uh, please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And I'll move first reading of uh, item 3.19 and then speak to it. Okay. Second. Second by Councillor Stevenson. So we have first reading on the floor. Uh, anyone else to speak before I go to Councillor Hamilton to close? Seeing none, Councillor Hamilton, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I uh, um, wanted to thank our speaker today for coming out um, and for, to Mr. Mayhe for coming uh, here to speak about his project. Um, uh, I know that this is a shift for this neighborhood. Um, and I go into every one of these land use hearings for an open mind, um, uh, or with an open mind, I should say, um, uh, that um, even if administration recommends something, I listen pretty, I, I try and listen closely to, um, for reasons that it um, uh, shouldn't be approved. Keeping in mind that um, I was one of uh, the a member of the previous council that supported the city plan. Uh, 
Councillor Hamilton, for some reason, we, you were on mute, got on yeah. mute. So if you could start so, back where you said you pre supported the previous city plan, or sorry, yeah. supported the city plan. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, my infrastructure is getting old here. Um, uh, but I supported the, the city plan uh, that was passed by the previous council. Um, and I understand that density um, uh, needs to happen in our city. And I also understand that that doesn't necessarily mean that every single proposal is a good proposal. Um, so I, I, I listen carefully. Um, uh, however, with today's application um, and, and with respect to the, the arguments that the um, resident opposition has made, I still think that um, I stand. I would support uh, this application today. Um, not only is there an opportunity for the resident and other residents to be involved at the development permit stage, um, and that's the appropriate place for them to be in involved uh, with respect to the concerns about the privacy screening, um, but uh, also that the density on this site at this specific location does make sense. Um, the addition of trees along this route will uh, add additional visual barriers. And uh, I think that, um, and remind all of my council colleagues that concerns about crime and safety um, can be addressed uh, in, in a number of ways. At the very least, I've seen constables come out to community league meetings uh, and uh, or to meet with community groups and talk about ways that they can um, uh, better support uh, uh, safety in their neighborhood with respect, usually with respect to uh, property crime. Um, I, um, you know, I, I, I hope Mr. Mayhe has been listening to the concerns um, of residents today and and uh, all day, and and understands that adding density uh, into a neighborhood is. Um, uh, you know, you become an ambassador for future projects in many cases, but um, as with this is, you know, going RF1 to RA7, um, this is a standard zone to a standard zone, and uh, I, I don't have uh, any um, concerns with the, the land we've got this way at this time. So thank you to everyone, and uh, um, I'll be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And I'll move second reading of Charter Bylaw um, uh, or item 3.19. Second, second, second by Councillor Stevenson. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. I'll move consideration of third reading of item 3.19. Second. Second by Councillor Stevenson. Please vote for the consideration. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And I'll move third reading of Charter Bylaw 20297. Second by Councillor Stevenson. Sorry, second. <laughs> okay. All right, so please vote for the final reading. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. So that concludes 3.19. Okay, so to city clerk, we're going back to okay. an item that was not dealt with, right? Yes, 3.3. 3.3, okay. And we have a speaker, right? Uh, can someone move that, uh, oh, Councillor Wright, can you move that we hear from uh, Nick Price to answer questions, sorry, to answer questions only? Sorry, we, we don't need a motion. We don't need a motion to add, oh, oh really? Yeah, the public hearing. Okay, oh yeah, of course, right, because we, we there already anybody wants to sign up, sign up. Okay, all right. So, uh, uh, yeah, you just need to read him to the record, and he's just here to answer questions. All right. So Nick Price is here to answer questions only on item uh, bylaw two zero two eight eight Southeast Industrial, 
And where were we in the process? Were we able to give uh, we had consul opportunity to ask him questions? No, we had a, we just heard from administration. Administration, right. at this time, we will go to uh, council members if you have any questions to the proponent. Uh, Nick Price. Councilor Wright, you have questions to? Um, so you're here on behalf of? Just hold on, if you have questions to, we'll ask them to come up. If you please, yes, yeah, step up into the, to the podium. I think my questions are more to administration. I'm, I'm not sure you're representing Panatoni developers or? Yeah, he is here on behalf of VC Companies of Canada, V3 Companies of Canada. Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, my name's Nick Price. I'm the uh, Director of Planning for V3 Companies of Canada who are representing Panatoni. So just here to answer any questions that we could address in terms of the proposal. Thank you. Um, I, now, now that I've received the um, the 660-page environmental report, um, I do note that, um, and I know I understand that it was previously Shaw Pipes um, property, and I, I guess maybe that's where some of the concerns arise: is whether there was any contamination from it. Um, in in the report, um, it does indicate in 20, August 2019 um, that. There were some soil samples taken um, that did show some contamination. And uh, an e email in there indicates in May of 2020 um, that they would be planning to remove remaining uh, impacted soil during development. So with all the with all the digging that's been going on around there over the, the past summer, has any other soil samples been taken and assessed? Through you, your worship to the council, um, I'm not specific to what's carried on exactly to date, but the conditions of any um, development that occurs on the site is making sure that we remove any contamination. So I'm not involved specifically in the construction, but I do know, I can assure you that any work that's carrying on has to meet all the conditions through the approval that was granted, which would include any removal of contaminations. Um, in, hopefully that answers your question so, to the best so, of my ability. Okay, um, so I'm just, and, and, and maybe, um, may, like I said, I think most of my questions are for administration, so you have no um, confirmation that any soil samples were done and confirmed to be, not to be contaminated. Yeah. Your Worship, if I may, I mean, I'm, I'm here to deal with probably the rezoning application, and, and this is dealing with construction that's happening now, so the, they're really two separate, if I may, the sort of two separate matters. I don't wish to overstep my bounds. Um, certainly, we could take that afterwards to clarify the point, but I'm not sure it's appropriate to the application that we have, which is really to just rezone because of a technicality. And I'm trying to be respectful of not wanting to cross my boundaries in terms of areas that are happening on construction versus planning. Um, so I'm trying to be respectful of that yeah. without maybe I'll Maybe I'll yeah, go to Mr. Okay. Johnson for clarification on the, the boundary of questions. Uh, this is rezoning for adding a little bit of sliver of the land to a public utility. How does that relate to environmental study and? Uh, Correct, Mr. Mayor, although we can, we can look at environmental issues as part of land use, of course, but okay. we do want to be mindful of the scope of what is before you, and it is a very, yeah. very minor uh, land use area. But we understand that that does pertain into the, PU, the okay. public utility lot as a whole. Okay. Yeah. My, my concern being, if there is contamination on the site, do we want that draining into a stormwater pond? And, and that's, I think, what's part of uh, what this zoning request for, is to expand that ability to, to put in that stormwater pond, correct? Okay. So, if, if I may, Your Worship, through to the council. So where we're at is, is the rezoning, you know, moving it forward, but then we go get all the permits that go with that. On, that's through um, administration. And when you do that, if there's contamination, you're required basically to re remove it safely um, to make sure that, you know, in terms of the recommendations that come out of that. And there has been, as you've seen, and there continue to be extensive studies being carried out on the site to this day um, to make sure that the land's been remediated. And in, in my opinion, I know that the outcome, we're moving this from really an old industrial type of situation to one that's going to be more of a modern industrial type of light um, warehousing type and so it's going to be better managed 
than what you currently have today. Um, and all we're doing in, in context of this application is really trying to deal with something that came up through that detailed design aspect to make sure that it comes into EPCOR's lands, which I think was previously referred to. So that's really the purpose of that application, but hopefully that helps address. I just got to be mindful of not being the expert as an environmental to go into too much detail, if and, I can. And Thank I'm you. with you there, because I'm not an environmental expert either. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I guess. I guess then that's really all the questions I have for okay. you. I, I will direct them more to administration. Right. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, appreciate it. Okay, now questions to, there's no one in opposition, so questions to administration. Uh, Councillor Wright. Okay. So if we were to refer this back, which was my intent um, for a, a, an up-to-date environmental assessment. Would that be completed for this section that's, that's being requested for rezoning? So the environmental assessment report that was provided to you uh, is considered up-to-date. Uh, it was provided for the original application for the storm pond last year, and we used that to determine uh, the fit of this existing zoning in front of you today whether or not there needed to be any updates or not. Um, in our opinion, it does not need to be updated because the current report covers off the area that's in question today. Okay, and then my, I guess my other question is in relation to, I think it's page two of your presentation, um, where it shows, wait, maybe not the presentation, the report, it shows the purple line as being the pipeline right of way. There currently isn't, Okay, in the report page, I don't see a page number. It's appendix one. So the, the pipeline right of way goes right through what's being requested to be rezoned, correct? I think on the, the drawings, it looks to be that way, but just because of the thickness of the line weights, uh, the, the pipeline right away will still be to the east of the PU lot. Okay. So the exit, what's zoning today is not within the pipeline right away. Okay. Yeah, because it looks to be right, right smack in the middle of it. Okay. As to what's circled on the map as the rezoning area, it appears that the pipeline goes right down the middle of it. Agreed, and it's just the scale of the map that's being provided for reference. Okay, and so then as part of um, um, what Mr. Um, Pierce, or, yeah, Pierce was, was speaking of, um, as far as retesting the, the soil in that for contaminants, that will be done as part of the permitting process or development or? So what's part of the permitting per per process is the requirement to remediate, and that's done in conjunction with uh, Alberta Environment, who is the regulator. Mm -hmm. Uh, once it, the remediation has been completed, uh, a remediation certificate would have to be submitted to Alberta Environment uh, and not necessarily uh, us for that consideration. Okay, but, but like I said, with, with all the dirt that's been dug up around there over the summer, where's that gone? Like has the testing been done? So the testing, the, the phase two results, uh, which is part of that 660 page report in front of you, uh, outlines uh, what type of contamination uh, is on site. Uh, and through the construction, uh, which right now, uh, I think there's just site prep going on. Uh, they would have to remediate that, whether that's the removal of the soil or if uh, the contamination was such a matter that it could be contained. Uh, so there's different ways of remediating it. Uh, and that would follow uh, a phase three mediation uh, report, uh, which would be provided at the development permit stage. The site prep goes down pretty deep. <laughs> like it looks like it's ready for a storm pond. <laughs> that so that could be, yep. Councillor Wright, that's about a development that's currently happening, so we can go out and take a look at that, but I would say that's not part of the rezoning that's before you here today. And just, can I just get clarity, sir, of where this is? So there is a cell tower um, just right off 34th Street. So is this to the east or the west of the cell, the cell tower, this section that you're looking at the rezoning? Uh, 
Uh, I don't think we have that reference point of a cell tower, but the applicant uh, may be, be, able, be able to clarify the, the ground truths. Could Mr. Price? Just for a frame of reference, I'm just one, sorry. <laughs> Uh, just to hold on. Uh, oh, I can't. Have not that yet. Again. Not yet. There's a process to follow. Are you? Have you done your questions with the administration? Okay. One other, maybe a couple more questions for administration, and then I'll come back to you to ask about just frame of reference, I guess. Um, Okay, um, yeah, I just, I wish that we had been able to receive this report when initially asked um, because I think that has created some, some secrecy around it, which, which heightened my, my concerns about this area. What, what secrecy? Understood, Councillor, but um, all of the, that report, that report would have, somebody please correct me if this is incorrect, that report would have been in the public hearing minutes from previous rezonings that went forward. It's on the public record. It, uh, 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 we, I apologize, I did not reply to your email from a few days ago. So that's on, that's on me that you asked for that and we didn't get it. It, w it was in the public record from previous rezoning, so. Okay. And if I'd been around for previous rezonings, I might have known about that. So, um, but and I wish somebody um, would have pointed me in that direction when I first started asking about this. Um, okay, I, I guess that's maybe all I will, um, I'll just, I guess for new information, I'll go back. Um. Councillor, just in terms of the cell phone tower, uh, the application area is further north of the cell phone tower. Um, Quite, by quite a bit. Okay. Past the Roper Road? It's about three blocks. So yes, past Roper Road. Okay. All right. Okay. I won't go back and ask for more information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Uh, any more questions? Any other questions, colleagues? <coughs> Seeing none, at this time I'll ask if uh, Council members have any questions to administration or to the members of the public uh, on the uh, any new information arising out of the previous discussion. So at this time, Council Wright, you can ask your questions to the uh, to Mr. Uh, Price. So if you could step up, please. No, I think Mr. Pollock answered the sort of frame of reference. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, so you have no questions. Okay, no. got it. All right. Okay. okay, so that concludes the questions. Uh, at this time, we are ready to close the public hearing on this. Uh, by law, can someone move, please? We close the public hearing. I move to close public hearing on item 3.3. Okay, we, we second. Need a second by Councillor Rutherford. Please vote. Just waiting for one more vote. Thank you. Uh, we have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Council Wright, you want to move the first reading? And move first reading of Charter Bylaw 20288. Second. Councillor Rutherford, second it, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have a first reading on the floor. Anyone to speak? Uh, I'll go to Councillor Wright to close. Thank you very much, Mayor Sohi. Um, I, I did have concerns in regards to the environmental assessment uh, for this, not just for the, the rezoning that's being requested, but for the, the whole um, parcel of land. Um, I, now that I have the information, I do feel a little better that not being mis misled or... Um, and... Um, and I do hope that as further development or, or permits are, are requested, that we do receive um, updates on the, on the environmental assessments that are being done to make sure that, I guess, none of these contaminants um, seep in in any way to our, our storm, stormwater ponds or um, our 
um, the Fulton Creek wetlands and working with envi Alberta Environment. Um, I hope that, um, that it will also be um, attended to um, so that we don't ruin our environment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And move second reading of Charter Bylaw 20288. Yep, second. Second by Councillor Rutherford. Please vote. <laughs> it's only Tuesday. <laughs> uh, display, uh, I, have, have everyone voted? We're just missing one vote. Councillor Jans? Michael, vote. Thank you. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And move consideration for third reading of Charter Bylaw 20288. Second. Councilor Rutherford, thank you so much for consideration. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And move third and final reading of Charter Bylaw 20288. Second. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. So we have concluded this. We have concluded everything, right? And uh, any notices of motions or motions without customary notice? Seeing none, but before we adjourn, can we give a big round of applause to Rama Yusuf for uh, having a phenomenal day conducting her first public hearing. You've done good. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you and so much. Yes, yeah, been and it's been 365 days for us in yeah. this uh, new role. So good. Yeah, happy birthday. And now we are adjourned.